Real quickly, review minutes, March 13th. Anybody got anything? Yeah. I would like to make an amendment to the, okay. Okay. To the uh, minutes on the discussion of the police chief. Police oh. department stabbing levels. Yep. Where are you referencing? Uh, I guess the third page. Okay. You can put page numbers. Yeah. Page uh, way. Yeah. I like to add a sentence that says if the third full time police officer work the two weekend days and two or three weekdays to eliminate the need for part time officers on weekend days, how would that affect your total personnel budget? So that was a question you asked, isn't it? Right. And we had some discussion on it and I guess I, I think we should that's something you should be considering. Well, so that so that we don't have verbatim discussions in minutes, can we say a discussion ensued about how a full-time officer working specific shifts would impact the overall budget? Well, but but the, the point I was trying to make is if he he wouldn't need the uh, part-timers on a weekend. Right. Well, and I guess that comes up in 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 my opinion impacting the overall budget. Well, yeah. Come, Pulls that into. I mean, that the if fewer part time. Yeah. You know, impacts part time schedules and the overall budget. Okay. How's that? Again, I'm just not trying. I'm trying to keep the minutes from. Well, it's just one sentence. A uh, yeah. couple lines in there. You, did you get that, Amy? That. What do you? And a discussion ensured on how a third. Third full-time officer would impact part-time schedules in the overall budget. And impact the overall police budget. And impact the overall police budget. But I want to make sure that reflects oh, okay. what Fred said. Okay, but I think in here we were asking him to present information <coughs> on uh, oh, okay. other other, other joining towns and the, the, the uh, yeah. administrative hours. So in addition to the first sentence just says the a few things paragraph. that we requested he do and yeah. A third, a, an additional thing is to tell us what, how would it uh, impact if that for third full-time officer were uh, displacing some of the part-time officers by working against Right. I mean, or, or to that effect, that we did ask him to, to look at that, and I agree that's missing from, right. um, from this paragraph. There would be a thing at the end of the second paragraph. Here. Yeah, it could go at the end, uh, or, yeah. the, or it could be added to the first sentence, or where, wherever, and Amy knows how to do that. So can I make okay. a motion to accept the minutes with that amendment, and we'll pass it, assuming that, or we'll just approve the minutes next time. Just make those changes and we'll just approve okay. the minutes next time. Okay. 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 All right. Um, we're going to open uh, public hearing for uh, Long Plain Solar LLC, uh, the appeal of the denial of the driveway permit uh, for a parcel of land identified in the Whitley Sensors Map 21, parcel 15, which is off of Christian Lane. Um, do we need to make a motion for that, Brian? Or do I just move? We just open it. I just open it. You can open it. Yeah, okay. Hearing is open. Um, I would like to give um, Long Plain Solar LLC the opportunity to present its case for appeal. And if you could indicate your name and all that kind of My stuff. My name is Alan Seawald. I'm a lawyer from Northampton and I represent Long Plain Solar. I have uh, Chris Clark with me, the senior vice president, and Julie Boschman, one of the managers. And, of Long Plain Solar or of Nexan? Well, Long Plain Solar is a wholly owned subsidiary of Nexan. Okay. Okay. So, but, one and the same. Okay. But they, those positions are with Nexan. Um, so, um, the, uh, if, I, if I may, I have a photograph here of the, uh, the driveway in question. I don't know if anybody's taking a chance to take a I look at it. I saw the maps. I drive so, every day. Yeah. So, here's the driveway in question. Yep. This is That's the, the one over here. This one. Yes. Well, it's all one driveway system. There's a, okay. an access agreement among the various parties. Okay. So this is, this is an existing driveway. This is a driveway that's been serving those farm fields for who knows how long, a very long time. 
Um, and uh, it's perfectly adequate for the access that, that my client needs. Uh, Long Plain Solar is not going to be building a driveway, reconstruct your driveway, or doing anything to this driveway, except perhaps laying down a little gravel where, well, it's a little shallow and gravel, but we're not reconstructing this driveway. When we, when, when we read the regulations, these are regulations for a driveway opening permit. There's no permit required simply to change a use that, uh, on the driveway. And so uh, my reading of these regulations is that no driveway permit is required um, for this existing, perm uh, this ex existing driveway. Uh, Long Plains use of this driveway after construction is going to be very minimal. Um, you know, there's minimal mowing, there's some maintenance, but no one is coming and going from this site day to day. And so uh, I would suggest that, uh, I would submit that there is no permit required, and if there is a permit <coughs> required, we would request that the board issue a variance from the, the 20 foot uh, requirement um, contained in number six. Um, Brian, the, the, the Gripcos have been notified? Yep. Yes, I've spoken with the Gripcos uh, lawyer. She's aware. Are you aware of that? What's conversation that? with the Gripco lawyer? No, that's no, that was a private conversation. I'm just wondering how the Gripcos feel about it. Well, it's, it's not their property. I understand, either. but it's within 20 feet of their property line. They're all part of the same access agreement. I mean, the Gripcos are aware. Uh, the Gripcos and uh, Long Plain Solar have fully resolved the issues between them in a comprehensive written agreement. Um, and uh, I, I was contacted by Attorney Leland from South Deerfield, who I don't see here, um, to say, what's this all about? And I explained it to her. And so she's fully aware of it. Her lawyer is fully aware of it. I'm representing that to you. Um, she called me, so somebody was, must have contacted Mrs. Gripko. Yes, the town contacted Mrs. Gripko and Mr. Ferrick in writing and made them aware of the, of the public hearing. Uh, a question, looking at your map here, your, mm -hmm. the driveway, you're showing existing what utility. Well, this it is one. It was attached to the one dash one of one of one, showing the existing utility pole on the corner driveway and new utility poles down the middle of the driveway. Is that actually what's going to happen? If, if that's true, then where's where's the access going to be? If you're putting all these poles in the middle of the driveway, is the plan you're referencing the shared access easement plan? On the lower whatever right corner. This, this page, whatever this is. It's one that has the inside. Yeah, shared access easement plan, one of one. You're putting, you're putting new poles in the middle of that driveway? Is that no, we, we obviously going to happen? We obviously would not put poles in the middle of the driveway. Um, this has all been vetted. The entire access has been completely vetted by both the zone board and the planning board. That all was part of the special permit. Right, but, but why is it, this shows you putting utility poles and in driveway. I, I guess I'm, a, I'm asking, is that yep. They're running gonna alongside the existing driveway, so they're not in the middle. They'll be, if you look at this picture here, they'll be in the grass area. So, are going to be in the grassy area next to oh, Okay, the okay, maybe it looks This map doesn't show it very well. No, no it's a very confusing map, map because there are okay. three properties that have joined there, yeah. and uh, so it is a very difficult to read plan. What questions do you have? Yeah, I, I got a couple. Um, the, the, the main question I have is, um, it, when do the driveway regulations apply? If it doesn't apply to an existing driveway, what if we can we consider this an existing driveway um are we opening ourselves up to like anybody who's got a little track on the side of their property saying i've got an existing driveway 
So maybe Keith knows our, a little bit I mean, about that. Our precedent has been, and there's many locations where we have existing access where proper farm properties access from the road at many places. And then when someone comes forward looking for, for a building permit to, to develop the land differently, we look at it as a different chains of use type of thing, and then we require permit. My biggest concern as I reviewed it, I just felt that while I understand the nature of the project and everything, the gray area to me was that I didn't feel I was authorized to issue a permit in the ad, in the fact that it's closer to the property line. And then I just feel again that if if I said to them, no, you don't need one, and then someone came back and said, how come you issued you didn't require that? Uh, that's why I did it. I explained to them that I felt the simplest way just to to clear to to get through this was to and I is it just just yeah, just, yeah. just and I explained to him let's let I explained to him as soon as I denied it I said let's go through the appeal process I feel that you have already presented your case that there should be no issues as to why an appeal can't be done and let's just so, get so it done that any farmer could just start putting access to his land from the road. That, that's not something they would need to get a driveway permit if they're just well, trying to get Well, there's so many places where farm tractors through the years have already been accessed, and I realize right. that Okay, yeah, 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 but that access doesn't require them to go get a driveway permit. It hasn't that, in the past, correct? It has not when, in the past. When that same okay. farmer now wants to come build a, a barn or something of that nature, uh, then okay. they have to come. So to access a farmer's and field. And the other reason why yeah. I also okay. felt that a permit was required is because on their plans, they were showing, and they show that there's work going to be done right up to the edge of the road by material being placed there. So there, so there, there might be problems in consistency um, if we say, well, it's an existing driveway, but um, we have other options that can still help this project go through. So I, I just didn't understand why it, the existing driveway wasn't a real obvious thing. And now I think I understand why you're saying it's not necessarily an existing again, driveway under how we interpret this. I am showing that there's going to be work up to the edge of the road with a material put in there. The, the, the extra gravel? Extra, just yeah. some extra okay. gravel. And so but, but, okay. there's going to be work that's going to be done right up close to the road and, and the other point that also is another factor that needs to be looked at was the existing condition of that concrete that shows in the picture is, is cracked up pretty bad and I don't know what will become of it and again it's our responsibility or my responsibility to try to make sure that the edge of the town road is not damaged by that's why we have driveway requirements too. That's the main question I wanted to ask you about why was it not obvious that this is a, an existing driveway? You have some other... I, I, I do. Um, Brian, is, is it an accurate statement that change of use does not come into play on this at all? I mean, it's certainly a change of use, in my opinion. So I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if, yeah. if change of use does not apply to the driveway uh, regula regulations that we have. Um, I you ask for my interpretation of, of the regulations? I am. Um, I don't think that's necessarily clear in these regulations, no. Which is problematic in my eyes. Yeah, because yes. it, it seems like the change of use was the thing that, um, or the building. Well, and, and that may be something that the board might want to consider yeah. for future amendments to these regulations. I, I've got another question for you guys. And, and I say this, I, I have trouble saying it because I've, I've never been opposed to any solar project in my life. Mm -hmm. That being said, I have a hard time believing that there's not going to be any reconstruction to this driveway. Keith's already pointed out that you need to to, 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 to make improvements by the road so that the, the road doesn't get damaged. I see two new telephone poles going in right next to the right next to the driveway, which means I know if I put two telephone poles in my drive next to my driveway it would impact the driveway and I would have to do something with the driveway as part of that 
as part of that construction. So I, I'm, I'm having a hard time believing that no reconstruction will happen on this driveway. The, uh, well, I guess that, that depends on what you consider reconstruction. Throwing down some gravel is not reconstruction of a driveway. There's no digging, there's no excavating. It is simply putting down some gravel where there's already gravel. So, um, you know, the, the fact is that you have regulations that are very specific on when a permit is needed. And, and change of use or construction of a building on an existing driveway is not one of them. It's construction. Our guy would disagree construction. with that potential. Excuse me? He would disagree with that potential. Well, where does it say change of use of construction of a building? No, I don't disagree with that. You don't disagree with that. I'm sorry, I thought you did. I, I, the, the reconstruction piece really is still, I, I, you're not going to widen it by an inch. Not widening it. Okay. Widening it. Okay. It's an existing driveway that we are going to use for access. And as I said, the access to this project is minimal as the years. And, and what happens if there is reconstruction found after the fact. Well, that would be a violation of your highway I, I get that, but it would also be after the solar was installed. So the... But that's true of any driveway in town. Okay. That's true of any driveway in town. And, and I mean, I, I, I'm reading the regulations, and I see nothing in this regulation about a change of use or a construction of a building. And if there is to be a driveway reconstructed, well, they're going to have to go to the highway superintendent and get a permit. I, if, if, I'm a, yeah. if, if that were to occur, we would be happy to restore it to its previous condition after the fact. Yeah, but we don't have any that's intention going around, it. That's going around the reconstruction rights. That's saying, you know, we're going to put, but and I'm, I'm, hypothetically, I'm talking right now. Yeah, we're not expecting reconstruction to occur. If it did, I'm, I am very concerned about the, and, and, and if I'm getting into the role of the ZBA, uh, I apologize, but I'm very concerned that if the driveway is suddenly reconstructed, gravel or, or, or what have you is put down, that we are going to create a, a visual that has changed that area. And, and I gotta admit that right now, in, in my opinion, you guys aren't, with, in, in terms of preserving the rural character, the work that was done on Christian Lane does anything but preserve the rural character of this town. So I'm just a little weary that I'm, I'm seeing no reconstruction, but I am honestly concerned that there is going to be reconstruction. So, sort of yeah. like, if I may, it's sort of like saying, you can build a house, I'm concerned that you're going to build a two-family, so what are we going to do if you build a two-family after the fact? This is uh, a driveway that's being used, it has been used for years, and it's going to continue to be used, and we're, we're talking about hypothetical potential things that could happen, and you're suggesting that my client would, in the dark of night, or suddenly reconstruct a driveway without contacting the highway No, I'm, I'm suggesting and that further? that interpretation is a gray area. Well, if you're saying that throwing down some gravel where there's already gravel is reconstruction, well then, every driveway is that then my neighbor across the street just put down gravel in her driveway. Did she need a permit to do that? I don't think so. It's putting down gravel in the driveway. It's not reconstruction. It's not opening a driveway to the town way. That's what these regulations, by their very title, are all about. The opening to the town way is already there. Keith? The point I'm making is that the area that's, you've all seen this, the area that's hashtag comes right out to the edge of the road. This is what I was told. When you say you're going to put gravel on, this the is what we're looking at. You're, you're going to be putting the, this whole hashtag area comes right out to the edge of the pavement, which then means that that is going to be putting gravel right out to the, all over the existing driveway. I'm looking at it. You're saying that you're not going to be putting, you're only putting gravel out there. I say that's not reconstruction. And okay. if and this, so that is reconstruction, we would I, ask for a variance so that we can put the gravel down within 20 feet of the neighboring property. 
neighbors who are not here to object because they've all yeah I, again my biggest concern is that during this work that gets done that the existing apron is not damaged and if if it is we'll have to come to you get a permit well if, is, is, so is this I'm, new is this new or is this existing you shown existing here where does existing mint on here it's it's there no, right on top of it. no but you got you got part of the driveway goes back to here this is concrete that's I don't know the what concrete this is. that's cracked up mm -hmm. that this is the driveway Circle. So, so what part of again? What part of this is existing driveway? This, this is the same angle that you're looking at. Right? Okay. It's all existing driveway. This is the apron right there. Yeah. That's right there. So, on this crosshatch is all existing driveway. Yeah, it's all yes. Exactly. Just saying. And they were going to when again in my interpretation when they came to me and said they're going to be putting doing all this work out on in the. That's so, where I just took that stand. That's all. So, are so are are you? Are you reconstructing the existing driveway? No, we're putting some gravel, gravel down over the top of what's there just to fortify it so that during construction the trucks can come and go. There's no reconstruction of a driveway. We're not building curbs. We're not opening a new driveway to the, to the town way. And again, if the intention is that anytime anybody puts travel, gravel down on a driveway, you need a, a, a permit from a highway superintendent, that's news to me. That is not reconstruction. That is repair. That is not reconstruction. And what stand would would it be expected then if no permit was issued and the work that you are proposing was done and then when they go in to clean it all up, there's damage done or we find out that the damage is done to the town way you have every no every not the town way but to well in the town way on the apron that's what I'm if there's damage to the town way you have a responsible party for damage to the town way if something happens and we need to reconstruct we're going to come to you to reconstruct as we stand here as I stand here today as you see it today there is no plan to reconstruct any part of that driveway we're doing minor repairs to upgrade it so <coughs> that the trucks can get in and out during construction after that we're not going to need hardly any access to the site. A couple of mows this season, some repairs. And we've got you on tape saying we're going to come back and repair yeah. anything that gets uh, damaged. So, yeah. so in the, the majority of this is on is on private property. You only got if this is the Correct. property line, right? Mm -hmm. You only yes. got a couple of feet that is on on town property, and the rest of it is is private. I'm, I'm only confused about which way should we move this forward. Um, when I, I read over things that I thought was the existing driveway. Now I'm a little confused on that. But if it is, if we decide it is not an existing driveway, then I think we should grant a variance. Uh, I don't know which way is better to do, um, but I think it's also would be a good idea if we kind of clarify this driveway regulation. I don't know what's the yeah. process for that. Is that certainly going to take more time than we do at this meeting, but I don't think they should wait for us to clear up our driveway. That's another issue we need regulations. to address. Yes. We should do either but say it's an existing driveway or grant a variance and uh, we've, we've, I, I, we I, need I, to make it happen. You know, we've we've worked in, in good faith with these folks in the past and I, I don't believe they're going to weasel out of repairing any damage that might be caused and Keith is Keith is on it. Keith will you, know, you will go and check, and if there's damage that needs to be repaired, you'll you'll be there. We've we've dealt with at least these people before. I, I think this might be the first time I've met you, but uh, you're representing them. And, and I'm a lawyer in Northampton. I'm the city solicitor of Northampton, and I'm not going anywhere. Joyce, if yeah. we grant a variance, what precedent? To Keith's point, what precedent does that create? Why why can we never? How, how do we never again grant a variance? I'm just That's, asking. It's, that it, it's within our power to do that. Well, yeah, yeah but. but then, then let's say it's an existing driveway yeah, and not grant variance. Yeah, I would say I, that's the better approach. I, I don't really know which one is better as an electrical engineer. But um, from what I read of what our town council says um, and the other background materials we got, I. I came in the door thinking existing driveway. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking the same way. And we can clear up 
Okay. The question of existing driveways in our, because there does seem to be a little bit of ambiguity about that. So I would um, move that we um, accept the argument that uh, there is an existing driveway, so the regulation does not apply um, with the knowledge and background that we have on tape anyway. <laughs> that that a any damage, uh, any concerns that our highway okay. superintendent has will be addressed uh, in uh, in a timely manner. Absolutely. I second that motion. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a question. Some yeah. Some comments for next time. Uh, some pertain to this project. We'll send, you. But, we'll send something. Uh, the facility you're building already at Christian Lane uh, and it pertains to this one is there going to be any kind of what kind of vegetation is going to be under the panels we show on here all around the outside the roadway is there going to be something under the panels in the panel area yes there will be a grass all under the panels because that is a pollution like problem the one you already have now is is really a, a, a nuisance it has been when wind is blowing I live couple of houses down and it's just uh, hazardous out there. Yeah, it will be uh, planted as soon as the seasonality allows for it. Right, but but neither of these sites, I, I, before you started there was probably nothing growing on the site, not even grass or anything, so something needs to be put on, Somebody otherwise you're going to get weeds. And and I hope that, I don't know what's happening at that one on, on uh, Christian Lane, and I hope it does not turn into a parking lot for Eversource, because there's five, six, seven trucks there coming and going every day. What, what is, why is that happening? So Eversource needs to set poles and upgrade their lines, so that's occurring. Uh, right. Our hope is that they do that efficiently and well, speedily as well, and once they do, they're out of there. Is that going on for two weeks? Utilities aren't known for uh, working Really quickly. Well, the, the utility in question probably brought down the property value of the people to the to the east of that driveway by ten thousand dollars with those three utility poles, making it virtually impossible to sell fair market value. Yeah, and if anyone and, and anyone's crazy if they don't if they, if they don't agree with me. So so I, I guess if the same construction company is going to build this one, that I would highly recommend that all the equipment be on this site not the existing one that they're using now or Eversource is using now. It's not Eversource. We didn't approve, we didn't, whoever is there, we didn't approve that as a parking lot for construction equipment. And, and also, how long is that vegetation that was planted to, um, well, I, I guess it's too late now, but the vegetation that was planted to minimize the erosion. The, the, it's, I, I'm not sure it can be <laughs> categorized as vegetation, personally. You mean for a screening? The, for the screening. The screening, well. Yeah, we, we saw the screenings today, and uh, you know, frankly, some of them, it looks like, have not survived the, the winter. Yeah. We'll it, need to reassess that. It, it looks like the box was checked. Yeah, this is vegetation, yeah. even though, but it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't truly address the intended vegetation that was discussed. I would not disagree. Yeah. And we will take that information back to our construction yeah. team and reassess. Okay. And, and were you guys involved with those poll sites? I believe that's Eversource's contractor. 100%? I'm not certain, but... Because you guys wouldn't live in that house. You've seen it. You wouldn't live there now. Well, and... and, and and I'm a huge supporter of solar. And I think that we should act in a way that supports the solar industry and doesn't give ammunition to people who are opposed to commercial solar. And that gave ammunition to commercial solar. It absolutely did. And that's why I've got to be in my bond, and I admit about this because I don't trust anything right now. But that is not a friend to commercial so the, the evolution of commercial solar in this region. It's just not. It is a disaster. And, and you guys, as a developer, should be all over Eversource. Because those lines should be underground, let alone poles seven feet, 10 feet apart from each other. They should be underground. 
because it, if, if someone were to come to me on land that I own and say, hey, we want to put, not, not with this track record anymore. It's, it's awful. And again, that's coming from a friend or something. It just, you guys dropped it. Unfortunately, it's hard to move or sway the utility away from their standard practices. Um, I don't disagree with that. Well, there, 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 are, there are ways to try to do it rather than just saying it's a utility. You can't, you, you, you can't fight Wall Street. So when will that project actually be completed or online or whatever, however you determine completion? Uh, I don't actually know. I think within the next couple months. Okay. Eversource has to complete their upgrades. Um, still an active construction site. Obviously there's work to be done with the plantings. All that is in process. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can fit this in in 20 minutes. Yeah. Let's just keep moving along. We may have to pause it. We may have to pause it. Where do you want to go, Brian? Well, the, the next one is advertised for, is it public hearing advertised for 630, so we should go there. Okay. So we may have to continue until after the town meeting, but we'll see where we get. Sorry. 6.30? 6 6.30, open the hearing for Eversource petition to, uh, for a yeah. poll in wire locations on Poplar Hill Road. Is there, any, is there anybody here from Eversource? Yeah. Hi. You get to come to the color class. She must be thrilled with me right now. <laughs> They all have copies of the uh, the petition, okay. the order. This diagram and then the aerial, um, aerial photo. I don't know if you want to just introduce what's being requested here. Sure. Um, I, don't have, I don't have a copy of that. No. I have a copy if anybody wants to see it. Yes, yeah. I would like to see it. Oh. Right. Um, so my name is Carla Cacho, I work for Our Source, and what I'm looking to do is um, install a new pole, as indicated on the diagram. Uh, the reason for this is because the existing pole that's there has transformer riser and it has tons of equipment on it, and I need to bring the primary high voltage cables across the street to feed house number six. Um, in order for me to do that properly, I need a new pole to move some of that equipment over um, and then be able to provide power to the new customer. So the new pole is going to be requested to the left of the existing one and it's going to be less than 100 feet away from that pole. The um, rationale behind the location that I selected for the pole is that house number five has a pole in front of it directly. So if I put another pole to the right of that, it's going to be two poles in front of the same house. Right? I think we have north and south here, right? Uh, north and south, yeah. So it'll be south of the existing one. Um, the other option would be to put one north of the existing pole, which is going to put two poles in front of house number five, I believe it is. Um, so I wanted to move it to the southern portion to kind of break up the properties that are going to have poles directly in front of them. Okay, my map doesn't show a house number six. Uh, the house number six is the new construction is directly across the street from house number five. Okay. It's a long drive where you just set to the back. You got it. Set pretty far back. Yeah, I know. So I'm I'm sorry. The 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 second pole is going to be in front of what house? It's going to be south uh, to the south of the existing pole, which is the house that kind of faces like the corner that other road. It's uh, on this diagram. It's the orange dot. 148. Right. No, I think she's talking about 148. So the, the yeah the new the pole is the so right, orange so dot. Two over one M is the new pole. This is uh -huh. the existing one in front of house number five. This is house number four, so it's going to be in front of house number four, and it's going to be on the side of the property for house 148. The other alternative would have been to move it 
in front of house number five as well. So my idea was move it further down so that no one house has two poles in front of it. Where's the next pole down from where you're expecting the new one to be? Is there a So there's one here right at the intersection yeah. of Conway Road and uh, Poplar Hill. So it's about 300 feet from the existing one. So can you point again on that map? So um, that's that's, that's what I'm looking at on my okay. screen. The other existing one is right here. Is down, okay. Right. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't sound like there's going to be a pole in front of the new house. Uh, no, there isn't going to. There's already a pole there in front of house six and the driveway for house number, or rather, in front of the driveway for house number six and one in front of the house of house five. So, because this is being done for the benefit of house number six. Right. Why wouldn't you put a second pole? If you have to put a second pole in front of any house, right. why wouldn't it be in front of house number six, which is the whole reason for this to begin with? Right. House number six is has a pole on their driveway and customer yeah. property. Could, could right. you show us where that is on the map? So, I'm feeling this map is a little incomplete. It doesn't show the places where the other poles are. Directly across the street, right next to house four, is the customer-owned pole for house number six. I didn't put it in there because it is on customer property not on town taking. Um, so in order for me to feed this pole, I need to use the pole that's directly across the street because that pole in front of house five is right in front of the driveway for house six. That's the driveway going Right, so there is a pole already there. That's the driveway going back to the house somewhere. You got it, so. Yeah, I, I don't. This so. is the driveway, so where's house six back here somewhere? This, this is, is the driveway that This goes. is the driveway, this is the pole here. Yeah. So it's. Right here, there's another pole here that's for the customer, and I'm looking to set a pole here, and then this is the one at the intersection. So where's house six in here? The house six is over it's here. Over it's pretty far back. So this is the pole that's there now. This is the pole that we put on your property around here, and I'm setting a pole here because this pole needs that equipment. is so overcrowded right now. I can't extend equipment or add equipment to that, so I need a pole somewhere between these two poles preferably there to put a transformer on it and move this pole out to then feed this on it. It can't go up there. Why can't you? It's the reason that I'm asking for the pole to be here, the primary lines do not at this point in time run directly over this property. So it would have to, it's gonna be more money on behalf of our customer to put a pole there as opposed to kind of keeping the pole where the primary lines are already running, which would be directly right. well, beneath it. And I guess that's my that's my point. It's I mean, when, when any time that I design a job like this for a new service, I have to think about the costs that are going to be imposed on the customer, uh, the amount of work that's going to have to be done, and I try to make it as convenient and as, a, as cost effective initially and also as fairly as possible. Um, I didn't want to set multiple poles in front of house five or house six, considering they already have two poles that are, one is on one property and one is on the road, so I didn't want to clutter the area with poles within the same lots or the same distance. I kind of want to spread it out and, a little bit. And, and I understand that, but the benefit is to the new house. Right. Of our property. And I'm still missing why the, the sacrifice right. shouldn't be on those shoulders as well. Because if I'm a homeowner, I don't want another pole in front of my house. The right. first pole's ugly. The second pole's gonna be even uglier. So I have a question about that. Sure. You're saying it's a three hundred foot span from the just, intersection to that first pole. Just about right, because there right. so that's not really within um, standard, correct? It's delta it's delta yeah. voltage there, which is Yes. 5 kb so it is within standards 300 feet right anytime we add new equipment so, so delta is built like that with longer spans i know it's older but construction. it is i work for national grid right so. but i still have to explain it for the sake of everybody else that's here that doesn't um so delta spans were built with longer spans initially it's, it is an older voltage that is the way that it was constructed for the present time anything that we do to delta voltage whether it's converting it changing equipment or adding equipment, then yes, we have to build it within standards, which would be the 150 foot one. So, so in this case, why. we have existing delta and I'm looking to add a pole to move equipment and I kind of have to break up the spans in order to do that. Right, so this actually that's has to be done to reach standard of construction 
versus right. a new house. Because I'm adding anything, and I'm going to have to, um, adding a pole, and I'm moving And if you, you at some point, numbers. upgrade out of that 4 right. kV, 5 kV, whichever it is, right. you have to re reset poles, reconductor, re everything. Right. So yeah. at some point, this is have to going to have to be done regardless. At some point, it may happen, guys. Right. So it is part of the process, and again, as you were mentioning prior, you know, putting poles so close to each other, cluttering, um, and even though I understand this is for a customer, it doesn't look good. So I, I would never look at it in terms of, this is for this customer, we're gonna put all this equipment <coughs> here, because at the end of the day, other people drive through the street, other people are gonna look at this outside of their window, so it's gonna affect not just the customer that we're providing service to, but everyone in that particular area that has to look at this or live there. So my idea, or rather, my thought behind setting the pole at the location that I selected is try to break up everyone's view. So in other words, I don't want two poles in front of five or three poles in front of six or whatever the case is, just kind of break it up so it looks smoother and it looks better. Um, but at the end of the day, this is a petition, so I'm here to ask permission if it doesn't pass, then we'll redesign it and we'll figure it out at that point in time. Paul? Yeah, so as, as I appreciate the aesthetic concern about the pole. Uh, we just cleared the stone wall which is right where that pole is going to go, so we can have a view all the way down our yard to the stone wall or to the chapel, which is on the other end. And um, this pole now is going to be plunk in the middle of that view. And so as far as I'm concerned, this, is, this pole is going to be an eyesore, at least from our point of view. We're at, well, our house is marked there, but... Um, Mark is over here. Yeah. So I just assume the pole, I don't see why they can't poles be very close together so they would take up a minimal sort of visual footprint. They don't, they'd be clustered right next to each other as close as you could make them to be able to support whatever new transformer needs right. to go in there as opposed to create a pole that's also going to be on the, well, maybe they have something to add that as well. I don't know. Well, well, so yeah. so my other right thought was, house, so if you didn't double them up in front of five, right. if you went down to where it came from, which was the island, mm -hmm. which is in front of anyone's house, it's not on anyone's property, just double up that pole. Um, but, we can't double it up there because the, the new pole is going to have a transformer that's feeding house five and house four presently. Yeah. Uh, the longer the distance between the transformer and the sores, the higher the chances are of having voltage issues. So if I put a transformer all the way at the intersection, by the time the power makes it to house four and five, they're gonna have low voltage. So I can't use the pole at the intersection is what I'm trying to say. It has to be within proximity of houses, you know, four and five to feed them without voltage issues. Um, so I can't, I can't go too far what in this case. about putting it on the other side of the street? We could, I could, I can put it on the other side of the road. Um, Ideally, the, we want to stay on that side because I'm trying to follow the primary cables that are there to minimize the cost of providing power to the new customer. Um, we could, but it's going to be, it's going to involve reconductoring and reconfiguring that road, meaning more money, more time, and more equipment that's going to be necessary in order to do that. Could but nothing more, is impossible. More money for who? Well, that's the thing. For six. Right, it, it may end up being more money for six. Um, well, if well, we eat up some of the costs, then it, pa it always passes on to rate payers anyway. So we're the owners of six, mm -hmm. and the way we see it, we don't really care where the poll goes. Right. We see it as we paid you in full right. over four months ago and don't have any right. service. We have a, a brand new house that we right. can't live in. And the reason you don't, don't have service is because we're here trying to- Yeah, well, I understand that. I'm just making sure that everybody knows right. what's happening. No, no, I understand. I just have yeah. to clarify my end. So it's not that we took your then, money that don't so, so, to so for who yourself. picks up this extra cost? Four, five, and six? It depends. Um, no, it, it, it may fall on house number six, depending on the cost of it. That's something that I'd have to redesign the job and pretty much start all over from scratch, figure out how we're going to reconfigure it, the snowball effect that it's going to have based on where the conductors are now, and then agree on a design and then start the process all over again. Um, once I have a design finalized, I can figure out the cost and figure out how this is going to be balanced, but it, it, it pretty much means starting all over from scratch. Is we were there a possibility this. that number four, which is our house, is going to pay for some of this? The cost would not be passed on to existing customers. It's, if anybody's going to have to pay, 
house number six if that were to be the case, which, you know, I'd have to figure out after the design or the new design is in place, if you will. Would it be possible to change the pole in front of number five to the support the, the new you can't, equipment so what that you What need? she's asking is you can't just replace the pole in front of five that's already existing right. and have that right. be good enough. No, we can't because the we can do a temporary fix, um, but at this time, even the temporary fix, because the pole is set by Verizon, is not an Eversource set pole, the one that's there. Um, it can take Verizon three months or so before they, you know, in other words, start the process and change it, put a bigger one, and we still need to set another pole. The reason is, is because that pole holds a transformer. It has secondary, which is what feeds your home and feeds house number five, and it has primary, which is high voltage. So I can't freedom? add more equipment to that and maintain the clearances that are um, expected by, mm -hmm. you know, pure on the regulatory so officials. how about putting it on the corner of five's property in 148? I mean, we could, as I mentioned, yeah. the design could be, it could change, it's but, it, but... But it's not cars in the street. It's on the same side of the street. So design. in other words, in, in order to satisfy our, our needs, right. they're going to be charged? It, it just depends on the extent of the work that's going to be required. So if I have to redesign this, I don't know off the top of my head right now how much extra work is going to be required or extra equipment to move it or shift it so accordingly. Let's, let's keep it on the same side of the street. It's the same deal. We're just, yeah. just we're, we're feet away from the existing pole number. We can't put poles too close together. That's too close. Um, they're supposed to be 150 feet yeah. apart. If they're on the main line, the reason is, is because if a car but hits a pole and that pole is too close to the other, it's gonna bring two poles down with high voltage and equipment on it. So we try to distance them on the street because of that. If a tree falls, a car hits it, whatever the case may be, we want <coughs> you know, a certain distance away just for safety purposes. And I apologize, maybe I missed why, but why couldn't you put another pole to the no on the north side of that driveway to six? We could put, I can, the other option for this is there's no house there, it's just a field right now. Right, the, I, I have to bring the primary over from the side of the road where house five is over to six. And to do so, there's already a pole there, so I have to move that equipment. So I can move the pole location and I can put it to the north of five on the same side of the road that, that the house number five is and work from that and move it over. That means house number five is gonna have the two poles in front of that property, but that is the other option. You know, I, I, and again, I... So if you look at... Here's what I'm saying. And, and, maybe, and maybe it may be an easy one, but right there, there's no house here. Right. The primary cables are on this side of the road. Okay. In house five. So I can put another pole. It wouldn't be across the street. It would but be why? Here. Why can't it be across the street? Because this would reconduct their, all of the primary. Well, so what well, would make the most sense in this case? I have to work with what's already there to minimize cost. So I can put a pole on the same side where five house five is, and that pole is just to the right side. So if I'm looking at house number five from the road, this is the driveway to the right of the driveway is the existing pole about maybe 50, 100 feet to the right of that, I can add another pole on the same side of the road. So lot, the house, or rather the lot for house number five will then have two poles in front of it. So that, no, that is another option. No one hears from house five, I assume. But you're still gonna need that other pole in between because of the distance, right? Right, so I still need to add a pole. So whether I put it in front of house number four or I put it also in front of house number five, I can resubmit the petition and start again, but Either way, we're going to need a pole installed there, where it goes or whatever we agree on then. That's, you know. So regardless of what happens, they're going to pick up the cost? If, if I can... We're going to pick up the cost, but we're not going to be able to live in our house. So can we put up a temporary power for him? We're trying. The problem is, is that this is a Verizon set area. So anything we do with the existing pole to try and feed his house is going to be on somebody else's timeline. So all the documentation has been submitted for the design as planned. That means pretty much starting all over again and waiting for Verizon Even to for agree to a bigger you, pole temporary. If you change right. this at all, that, then you yeah, have basically to start. What, basically what you're saying is that that option mm -hmm. is the only option that's gonna get this done quickly. That'll be right, that's the fastest option because everything is designed and agreed upon, you know, permitting permission from the time to, from the time to proceed. Um, any redesign or 
rework that has to be done is going to slow down the process in order to be able to provide power. Um, but even again, temporary power. Even temporary power because of the equipment that's on that pole right now. It's so congested, and the pole is not ours. It's Verizon asking Verizon to set a bigger pole temporarily. It's still going to take. So that two pole will hold another service coming off of it. Is what you're saying? Not primary. Yeah. Not primary service. Yeah. It's water under the bridge, but why wasn't this conversation taking place three months ago? With exactly what I wrote here. With the town? With everybody. I mean. Right. So what we it is is. Wait. Yeah. Exactly there was another really. petition, but what happened initially? This is the second petition for this job. This is a Verizon say area. The I mean, the rule is. Verizon say area. Set, set area. Set area. Set but why wasn't area. Verizon contacted three months ago? They, 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 they were. were. They were. Verizon. Yeah. Don't you? Verizon came in here. They were ill yeah. ill prepared, and you them. asked them to come back. And then in the meantime. Eversource got involved and said, right. we can fix it by doing this. Let's just try this option. So I met, I met with Keith, the the highway boss for your town, yep. Yep. after the Verizon, oh, sorry, the, after the Verizon petition, and we agreed to change the poll location, and in doing so, Verizon said, we're not going to set it, we're not going to set the poll because now we're too far from our lines you guys can set it, which is the way the rule goes with the regulation. If Verizon says we're not going to set it, Eversource can say, okay, then we'll set it, which is why I'm here today. So then I started the petition process all over again with the changes so that we can set the poll since Verizon decided not to. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, if Verizon has been notified ahead of time, everything went into effect as soon as the customer decided this is the design that we're going to that we're gonna agree to, and I sent the bill and sent Verizon the notification, but when you're working with another utility, you know, they're gonna have their time to submit the paperwork, which they did, they submitted everything, they came to the petition, it failed, and so we took over, redesigned, submitted the new petition, and then if it fails again today, we start the process all over again. New design, new petition, and we continue going forward. Um, my understanding is that the Verizon engineer that was here uh, could not properly answer the questions that were asked, is my understanding at least. Um, and so the petition failed because it, it wasn't agreed upon. Yeah. Yes, sir. I sort of feel, I feel very much the same way about this one. That I, I just don't, I, I just feel like you, you give us as little information as possible and try to kind of rush us into making some kind of decision. When I mean, there's no rush, but... Well, no, but there is, there because... Is a rush. Well, but there's, 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 there's somebody who's made a significant right. investment in their house. This is their home, and I right. understand. They want to move in. Right. And it just seems like... There's, I think these Verizon folks come in and, 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 yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's like you're, it's not your butt on the line. No, it's not, right. wasn't his butt on the line. And we've seen that other guy before. He never comes prepared with information that's relevant to answer the questions that right. you would need for that's a poll. Verizon I, you're talking about? The Verizon guy. Yeah. He's, he, he has never come to a poll hearing with relevant information. So uh, to me, the, there's, there's many, many frustrating things, including you keep referring to uh, how you're trying to save money for the customers, yet you know, we're, we're trying to get a solar hookup so we can save some money, and it's like, screw you, we're not doing any more solar hookups, okay? So, so that's the environment you're in. That, well, that we, I, you know, I understand the, the, that you're putting be, kind of okay. the local people at each other. No. And well, I, I understand that there may be problems. I'm here to represent the customer in this particular service. Um, I understand that I work for Eversource, but if there's a problem with the solar portion of it, I can involve the account executive and have the account executive contact the town directly. Um, but in this particular hearing, I would like to kind of keep the focus on the service for the customer. But I, I promise you, I'll get back to the office, I'll get the account executive involved, that they can contact the town regarding the solar job and the solar process. With apologies to people who are here for the Poplar Hill poll hearing, mm -hmm. we've got to put that on temporary hold for about Five, five minutes yeah. Maybe because we've three. got a special Maybe town meeting three, right? at seven yeah. o'clock and that has to happen thank you thank okay you. i will reopen the poll hearing i apologize for that okay just to let you know i did i sent a message to our community relations and account executive to look into what's going on with the solar and contact um you, fortune regarding it, it, it's, it's been in all the newspapers every time it's trying to put up solar it gets it cut down and it, I know that, um, and I know this is taking away time from Poplar Hill, but from what I know, there's 
Some of our circuits are so saturated with solar that equipment needs to be upgraded before new install. I'm not sure if that's the case here. Um, our community relations rep will take a look into it, but there are absolutely some instances in which the circuit just is not equipped to handle any more generation in or demand coming out of it uh, without particular upgrades set into place. So if that's the case, she'll look into it and she'll let you know. Um, but, but it is something that's happening. And the more solar goes in, you have to take into consideration the equipment that's there. It, it can handle a certain amount of voltage. All right, let's, 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 let's move on here. Sure. Can I? I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure I got your name. Eversource person? Yes, Carla. Carla. We spoke on the phone. Yeah. Okay. So what about, I mean, I don't want these guys to have to wait three months. I think it's outrageous that that would be the case anyway. And it's not your fault. It sounds like it's Verizon's fault, but whatever. So personally, I wouldn't mind if the pole were moved 50 feet to the south. That, I don't yeah. think that would take more engineering. From your proposed position. Yeah, from right. the proposed states. Move it down just so it's sort of behind a tree um, so I don't have to see it. And those guys wouldn't have to see it because we would have to be shaded also a little, not in the tree. But if, right. You know what I mean? I can, so, um, I can move it over if, if I put it near a tree. Uh, we have to trim the tree trim to guidelines for primary. Yeah. Um, so that'll be another process that has to take place before we we'll can take proceed. We'll, we'll, we'll take the, the tree down. down. <laughs> cut the tree down. It's not a big tree. I mean, I'm, a, I'm okay moving it. I mean, it's fine by me, whatever. Well, I mean, that would, that would kind of, I mean, it wouldn't add any more cost. Just, right. Yeah, so just move it down. Right. I don't so know. So if you can put another five. stake in, and we can agree on it, or maybe we can meet there sometime. And yeah, I can do that. Well, let's then we're do that. Go. The only thing is, um, if the new location yes. is going to be within proximity of Verizon lines, now Verizon has to get involved again. Um, so just another thing to take into consideration. We what can definitely shift it. Um, proximity is not well, if we, regardless, in redesigning it, we have to start the petition process over after we agree. But the reason I'm here today is because the new poll location that I agreed on with Keith puts the pole away from the Verizon lines to the extent that Verizon says we don't need to set it, you could do it. But if the new pole location is within the Verizon lines, then Verizon has to resubmit the petition, agree to it, and then start the process with Verizon right. setting the pole so instead of other So even moving this pole, even if you were to take that stake and move it 10 feet to the south, all this has to happen. Right, exactly. I have to go out there first and we can all meet up at Poplar Hill agree on the location and then based on where the new location is there's changes that are going to have to be made it could be tree trimming um it could be that verizon has to set it now it could be shifting could, could you guys go out there depends. tomorrow um i have appointments already scheduled for tomorrow can we go now yeah that seems the way to resolve it because we're, we're talking we're talking uh i don't see why the homeowner's view of, of the calls versus Verizon or Eversource standards right. for full distance and full placement. Right, that's fine. I mean, so, I'm available Friday, not tomorrow. I have too many appointments. So, right. yeah, Friday. Okay Friday? I'm, I have a job. I'm not going to be there on Friday. Okay. But, that, but you don't. But you don't care where the site, where the location is. Mean, put the pole in Hatfield. For all I care. Right. I <laughs> right. So you don't need to be there. Right. No. But okay. you guys can be there. We'll be there. So, be there. So, I'll be there. Say, I'll be nine a.m. Does that work? What time? 9 a.m.? Four or five. Stand by well, Friday is good. 9 a.m. earlier, better. No, I have Friday. Tonight. 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 Oh. tonight. In, I mean, you can be there in 10 okay. minutes and take care of all this. And without ever having to come back. I, I have prior engagements. I can't. Yes. Sorry. That's what the, it's not something that was planned ahead of time. Right. But I can. Um, does 9 a.m. work for Friday? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. okay. Will someone let us know that you guys. Well, Played well in the sandbox, and I have to resubmit the, the petition because it's not in the same location. But they, they, they okay. should put this as a okay. high priority. I mean, you guys should have had this talk with all the neighbors all at once to begin with. That's what the petition was for, right? So we submit the petition, the abutters get the notification, right? But that so, didn't work last right. time. Carla, can I ask one more question before sure. we get rid of this whole thing? Sure. If Paul agreed so right now that the poll location was fine, mm -hmm. we could have power. When? Um, I want to say Verizon still has to replace the pole on number five, but that's going to be scheduled together, so it can be three or four weeks. 
Um, now, if, if it's if not we approved, have to move the pole three if inches to, up the street, we have three. I have to agree on the design. I have to resubmit the petition if it's upper source or notify Verizon to then go out and look at it and start their process all over again. The petition got sent to the town or the Verizon average source that could be within a month's time period to get all that done. And then if it passes at that point in time, then the clock starts again. So another month. So maybe more. Right. So so it's not gonna help. No, it's not gonna help. So I might as well just stick it where you got it and I'll just live with it. I'm not happy about that. And I don't think these guys are happy with it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to repeat the wait to return. No, I mean it's for, because now. we're paying rent to live in an apartment now. Well, our house is being built, and then our house is going to be built, so we're going to have a mortgage and rent because we can't move in, and then potentially have to pay for more costs for moving the pole, which is, I mean, I don't want to be an ass here, but that's ridiculous. Yeah. It is ridiculous, and it's ridiculous that this has gone on so long when we objected to this the last time when Verizon was here. Of course, we didn't understand what they were talking about because they didn't explain it right, but that's another story. So we're taking the hit for you guys having to go through all this folder roll to move a pole 50 feet. I mean, and that doesn't sound like you it should guys take that much engineering. Is a pole up already? Oh, we, we yeah. talked to Eversource in the beginning in oh, September. Uh, right, mm -hmm. so this has been going on since September. From September to now, there were plenty of opportunities for a pole hearing I would think. where this could have been ironed out. Yeah. Right, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know there, there was gonna be a pole there until yeah. Whenever that Verizon here. Right, which is the the intent behind the petition is that to notify the abutters well, and um, ask now. the town for permission. Right. So, I mean, we wouldn't normally we wouldn't notify anybody ahead of time. Only the customer involved that there's a petition that's going to take place, uh, depending on the design of the job. But everyone in the area is notified according to the you know or based <coughs> on the petition process, if you will. Like that process. 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 So, so is it is it marked out there today where this new pole will go? Yes, it's staked. It's staked out there. Okay. Yeah, I staked it. And Keith was there when I staked it. So I, when we meet on Friday, we'll restake it and take a look at what the changes are going to be, no. or if it gets approved today, whatever the whatever you guys say. I'm not here to tell you that this is what I'm doing or what I'm not. I'm here to ask permission. So if I get permission to do so. The job proceeds. If not, then we'll meet up Friday and we'll take it from there and come back to another petition, whether it's our resource or Verizon. So, if if you meet on Friday and decide the location is okay, it delays the whole process by a month. Well, well no, no, no they can just. Paul, if Paul's willing to decide it's okay right now, can we okay it right now, or do you want to have the meeting still? That's up to you. Well, where the poll is, where the moved. mistake is. I would just leave it there. Yeah, because if, clearly, if they move it, we're going to be. Up, so. But you know what I'm saying, if if you agree to the location Friday, uh, well, if I it, agree to the location right now, as where then, then there right doesn't now, have to be a meeting Friday. Then there doesn't have to be a meeting Friday. We can approve this today. But I'm right. saying, or if you wait till Friday and want to look at it again, uh, I don't need to look at it again. I don't like okay. it where it is, so I know where it's so planned to be going. But that's why I've been objecting to it all along. So I don't like it anymore now than I did whenever it was before. Yeah. But, you know, I don't want to hold these guys up. So it's just something I have to look at. It's, I can live with that. Week. And so do they. We can live with that, I guess. I can't speak for them. Not happy about it. Not happy about it, but there are it, neighbors. I just, I, just, I just want to make this understand. If the meeting happens on Friday, and an alternate location is chosen. If it doesn't involve Verizon setting the pole, that would still take how much more time? Well, the, the position will have to be resubmitted, and we start again with a hearing, and we'll have to be we approved. We have to come back for a hearing. Right, and then we'll take it from yeah, there. We could, we, could, we could set a special meeting of this board for that hearing at who cares when if it means expediting it. So I guess if, if we could set that hearing whenever, at, at the earliest convenience to you guys, what would be the added time, and I don't care what the machinations are, what would be the added time of the whole process? 
a day, and it's gonna a week? Be, it depends ultimately on the design, but if it's just going to be Eversource setting it, then it's just the added time of the petition process because we can't do anything until the petition. Okay, so if you guys, if it was just the Eversource thing, right. the petition process can only, need to only take 48 hours to post a meeting. Mm -hmm. So when could the design be done by? after the petition is approved that goes over to scheduling and then it's scheduled accordingly. So ultimately, if you can expedite the petition, if we're not gonna agree on it today and you can get it in by next week and I finalize everything and give you the paperwork as soon as next week, if not so Friday a itself, a week later we can start the scheduling so process. So if, if you guys agree on this at nine o'clock on Friday morning and let these guys know by 10, we can have 48 hours, we can have a hearing, and only two of us need to be here, at 10 o'clock Tuesday morning. Or right. you could, you could schedule. How long do you have to advertise for the hearing? I'd have right? to, yeah, the abutters list has to go out. You have to, what, two weeks notice? Well, where do you buy? But isn't, you that, isn't that what you're saying, the 48 hours? Well, 48 hours is just to post a meeting. Can oh. we just continue this hearing for till next Monday, so Tuesday? Yeah, we can do that. Let's Without do that. posting a new hearing and a new meeting and all that, Brian. That works for me. Yeah. You could. Next week on Tuesday, you said. Well, no, I, just threw the, I just threw that. I just threw that. It's a day. And it doesn't have to be at seven o'clock at night. I mean, it can be. No, it depends on <laughs> all of our schedules. I know. Uh, Tuesday during the day is not great for me. What about at night? Um, Right. Uh, I'm going to pull up the calendar for that. Uh, Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to smash that. I'm meeting at 6.30 or before or after. Right. I can leave, uh, at, I can leave work at 5. So I can get here by 5.30. You could be here by 5.30? 5.30 yeah. on Tuesday? On Tuesday, yeah. Which is a financial committee meeting for me, so what? That's just you guys, not us. Correct. Right. Do we need you? Nope. Fine, we don't need so some, somebody will have to take notes though, and Amy will be at the finance committee meeting. So they I'm hoping might this, this is a, this is a these are notes of about ten words. I've been taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I think somehow we'll be in there. So we're going to continue this hearing to five thirty, um, and if you guys can't agree on Friday morning, we'll just we're going to re, re meet anyway to figure out whether we accept the petition or whether. So do I drop off? Then you put it if it if it stays at upper source that poll instead of mailing my petition out, can I then bring the paperwork Absolutely. to the town? Yes. Or email it? Whatever works for you. If you have an email it's faster because then I can have my admin scan it in and just the send it to you. Typically the email is faster than a car. Okay. Do you have a business card with your email? Um, town Administrator at Waitley.org. Okay. Town Admin. Town Admin. Admin. April 2nd at 5.30. April 2nd. Continuing this hearing. Yes. Yep. Continuing. Okay. Uh, um, you need a motion with the time, date, and place certain to continue your hearing. I'll, I'll make a motion to continue this poll hearing for to 5.30 on Tuesday, April 2nd. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. And it's here, right? Uh, in, so, uh, it's finance. This room. Finance, finance going to be in this room? Maybe you have to be in the small room. Whaley Town Offices is fine. Whaley Town Offices, okay. Town. You can find us in one of the rooms. I'll see you on Friday. Okay, thank you. Okay, does this work okay. for you, Keith? You can. I'll be here. I'll be Just because you know. Okay, the great. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. 5:30 p.m. 5:30 p.m. Correct. Okay. April second. Thanks, you guys, for your patience. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Keith. All right. Yeah. Paul and Pete. We are obviously running behind, and I apologize for that. We have a short um, item. Uh, so I'm Paul Newland, and this is Pete Westover. And Pete and I have been considering the open space and recreation plan of 2006-2011, and Pete approached me about um, the possibility of moving on one of the recommendations of the open space, the space plan, which was recommendation 13, 
request that the Open Space Committee app uh, appoint a trails working group to facilitate the establishment, maintenance, and mapping of trail systems and access points for seasonal non-motorized uses. So we're here to suggest you all appoint a working group in which we would be happy to volunteer. That was uh, a very question. Okay. Yeah. The working group needs people in it. Yes. You guys well, you got two of them right here, and anybody else is welcome to join the working group. Um, I, I know this has also been a discussion of the rec committee and the CPC, because CPC does have funds to put towards, space. and to specifically to, towards trails okay. and the, the creation of. Um, so I think it makes sense to recruit from those two committees. Somewhere. Well, yeah, and I and, and what I was going to suggest is one of the people on the committee on the working group that you're suggesting um, also be appointed to the rec committee uh, because rec committee. Why not have somebody from a rec committee appointed to the working group? Um, because I am very familiar with the makeup of the rec committee right now, and I think we'd be hard pressed to find somebody on the rec committee who would be willing to do that. Um, for better or worse, that's just, you know, we all deal with the challenges of volunteerism in, in town. Oh, I'm aware yeah. of this. Um, so, and, and because for CPC money to be uh, appropriated, it needs to be a request of the rec committee. That's just part of Mass General Law, that the, the rec committee. Well, they could for, the, for the recreation um, designated portion of the money, right, of CPC money. Yeah, all open space would come under under recreation. But they don't have to be on the committee. Any committee can ask for CPC. Ask well, right, that. but but they're going to look for the rec committee to bless it. I guess is my point. Well, that's fine. Well, they could still go through okay. the rec committee. Yeah, yeah. anybody. Can. Um, and so we'll work in, in conjunction. But I think if if yeah. you guys too, and who else? Whoever you want to appoint. It, yeah, I'm sure there. Might be prudent to, to, if, if there's someone really familiar with the CPC, maybe either a former or current member would probably be be good because you need someone sort of in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, and there are user groups. I mean, the Snowmobile Bill Association definitely needs to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. there, are, there are others, I think, you know, the local land trust, uh, Kestrel, or others. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I'm thinking about the committee that formed that, which was the Open Space Committee back in, and I sat on that back in 2006, five, I, I, I forget what it was. Most of those people have moved out of town, but there is still, other than me, there's one person who was on that committee. Um, I won't throw him under the bus right now, but Paul, if you want to, I'll send you an email as to who that is, because we both know him quite well, and he is around town now. Okay. So if I can just mention, well, one of the things that uh, uh, you ought to be aware of is there is grant money that's, that's possible not only for trail construction, that's the Recreational Trails Program that DCR runs, but also now under the Commonwealth Trails Program for, for planning. And multi-town projects can draw a lot of attention and some good funding. I agree with that. I get so, Deerfield and Sunderland and Hatfield and yeah. Connect yes, all the way that's up to Asheville, the idea. you know, Conway. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. Hatfield is too. I have a firm called Conservation Works, six of us, and we work all over New England. One of the things we do is trail work, and we work in most of the towns around here. And I, there are things happening. It would be really nice to make those connections. The working group could. I think that's great. So, okay. Then we make a motion to form a working group. group. Yeah. And uh, uh, we can start with nominating Paul and Pete. Um, with the idea that they might expand from there, and we had a few ideas about which way to expand. Right. And I've got one name for you guys, but I would encourage you to bring other names to us so we can appoint them. Okay. Okay, I second that motion. Not that in motion. And then you're the chair. Motion. So you have to say. Oh, I thought you made a motion already. I did make a motion. You second it. Second now you have all to say in favor, blah, blah, we're done. Okay, okay. okay. thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Um, I apologize. About 17 minutes late. Oh, no. uh, appointment Karen Gaston from Diamond Shine to discuss host community agreement uh, for proposed retail marijuana establishment be located at 13 State Road in Wilson, Massachusetts. Yes, sir. Hi. Good evening. I've got all my documents are e documents. So. Oh, cool. It's a lot of pages. Yes, it was a lot of pages. So we had our community outreach meeting at the 13 State Road location. Uh, we also had a follow-up meeting, but we kind of went out of order. So we're back 
in order again, so here we are for the host community agreement. Um, our mission is to provide high quality cannabis to customers with a product and service they can trust, to build our brand on core values of customer service and care, hospitality, highest standards of quality, honesty, and integrity, and community outreach. So I also have the document which was not included within the business plan but was included with the site plan so there's information regarding the traffic. Uh, we estimate 1,500 um, customers per month, 346 per week, and which leaves us to an average of 58 customers um, per day. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Peak daily visit visitation is estimated to be two times daily average or 116 uh, per um, peak day, which equates to approximately 12 visitors on the hour. Hourly visitation is estimated at two times an average hour or 24 visits within an, 24 visitors within an hour. With an average of 1.5 customers in a car, the site will have approximately 15 vehicles visiting the site at its peak hourly time. It is estimated that traffic flow patterns in and out from the site will be approximately 75% from to the south, Northampton, Hadley, and Amherst, and 25% from the north, Deerfield and Greenfield, with most traveling traffic, traveling, utilizing uh, Interstate 91. Those from the north using exit entrance 23, and those from the south using exit entrance 22. It is not expected that there will be any pedestrian access to the site. Adequate internal uh, circulation within the parking area shown on the site plan. The proposed minor revisions to the pavement and parking maximize convenience and improve safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site and in relation to the adjacent road. And the site plan should have been attached to the business plan as well. That's my fault. It's not. Um, okay. But the site plan is in record from the town meeting. But I can give you a copy that I kind of wrote over a little bit if you want to just take a look just for the sake of looking at it. So that's a good question. Of course. Where do you get the data for your yeah. foot track, anticipated foot track? That was from my civil engineer. That was from your civil engineer? So yes, he did on his own. Your civil engineer is anticipating the amount of customer flow you'll have. Based on the traffic studies, yes, and my business plan. Based upon your business. So your business plan is really where the numbers in terms of numbers of customers per day or per hour day week month Less, et cetera. yes sir comes from. so that's that's what's attached at the end that your business is your business plan yes the from whole the um it's like 70 right. something page document it's got all yeah, the like geez. charts i didn't get all the way through it sorry yeah, no it's okay i tried to make okay. the writing bigger too just so i could see it too but um that has all the projections inside of it I know and I read what, over. What is, what is, is this based on? You, you have other other locations. Uh, we only we're only currently looking at having a dispensary here in Waitley. We're looking at having cultivation in Deerfield. But no, just there's no other locations where you're operating from. No, sir. Okay. No. Um, so I was a little confused because at one point in here, you say that. Um, we plan to process cannabis in a clean and compliant so laboratory, but a laboratory is a different kind of facility. We're not, Can you that's, that? the business plan encompasses all of my business. So we're talking strictly about the dispensary right now. We're not doing any type of production in the dispensary location that I'm looking no, okay. for the host. So this I compliant laboratory is not. No, ma'am. It's not your compliant laboratory. No. It's a compliant laboratory. Yes, we, ha okay. we have to purchase from other cultivation units within the state of Massachusetts. So we would have to purchase, and the, the assumption is that they would also be compliant and tested, the products would be tested before we would be selling them. When we go for the cultivation piece, that'll be different. Okay, and so that laboratory is basically, is not at this point planned to be uh, in Wheatley. So, okay, that, that's, no, that just, uh, had to it. No, I just, I, I had included this for all business uh, plan plans for the future, just so everything was in one, kind of living document. So, what happens if you guess wrong? What happens if your business plan is just, uh, we, we've seen what happens in Northampton. Of course. Uh, Northampton requires officers virtually all the time. You're absolutely there correct. There are people lined up around the corner of the building to get yes, in. Sir. You're right. Um, there are traffic cones all over the place. Yes. Um, 
What happens if that is your reality? Well, it would be nice, but uh, well, the, for your bottom line, for the, yes, for the bottom but, line, yes, and for what we're negotiating with you guys well, but today. But in terms, but in terms of your foot traffic, of course, and cars. So uh, you're right. You're right. Those are all good questions. So what I'm what I'm proposing is right now. So what Northampton does as well, the needed dispensary. Um, they actually contract out with other people to utilize their parking. So like, for example, you can park at the Gazette as part of their parking. So it may be something that if other business owners are open to it, if not, then if somebody parks where they're not supposed to, they would have to be towed. They would have to wait for a parking spot just like any other place. That's pretty much what we're working with. And we would, of course, hire the same to make sure that we had the flow of traffic, the off-duty police officers as well. And, and I guess the point of my question is, that we're talking about a host community agreement right now. Yes. Which is very different than a process of, of, of the ZBA, the planning board, what have you. Right. That being said, we can ask for whatever we want to in a host agreement. That's right. Um, You're right. And and I'm less concerned, and I'm, I'm concerned, I'm less concerned with people parking on 510 because they're just going to get towed. Right. But what I am more concerned about is actually the scenario that you painted and, and I got to be honest people using parking across the street there's no crosswalk there's no traffic light mm -hmm. we have recent memory very unfortunate recent memory of people being killed in Sunderland because they're crossing 116 a state highway um, I know that I don't want that to happen no. And I'm sure your business doesn't want that to Absolutely happen. Absolutely not. So I really struggle with allowing traffic as part of this. I mean, there's got to be a plan to to control unforeseen traffic. That's that's my anxiety. Again, we're not the ZBA, but uh, but we need to be comfortable with neighbors concerns about traffic where does where does the foot traffic go where's the automobile traffic go and i get if your business plan is spot on other than increased traffic right you've got the parking you don't have pedestrian challenges based upon every retail um, store so far you're wildly underestimating your traffic Potentially, things have quieted down as well. If you have gone by the NIDA lately, now that they are opening more dispensaries, and as well as you guys are looking at opening up the dispensary down the road, um, like diagonal I'm from sure Yankee shop, Candle, yeah. that will you know, probably be a lot more busier. We don't have as much to offer as the NIDA dispensary. We're going to be a boutique brand once we are able to cultivate our own. So we're not going to, you know, have as much foot traffic as other people that are allowing. I believe that they're looking at doing like 40 something strains of marijuana. So we're not going to have as much of an offering. We're going to have a specific clientele of people that are going to be coming to us. And I have, I do actually pass by Nita frequently when I come out here and the traffic has died down a little, but I do agree that it is a concern as well. But I have seen that things are going down as more and more businesses are open from the Mass Cannabis Commission. I, I think you're going to see a lot of traffic from the north. I don't think there's any dispensary to the north of us. Right. And so, until the shutdown. Well, okay, but then, but well, then Greenfield. you've got a, 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 a variance of, of two miles. Correct. Um, and so I, I, I guess I, I hear all that. Right. But I haven't heard the the scenario because we, at least I've got to think about in a host agreement, what are we going to ask for? <coughs> to make sure that no one gets killed walking across the street. Right. That, that's, my, that's my angst, and I haven't heard what the solution is for that. I've heard parking solutions. If, if, if other people want to do that, they, they get paid X amount of dollars, and that's fine. But that doesn't solve the safety issue, and I, and I need to hear that. We need to put something in there right. about that. Maybe it is a police person. Correct. Especially if they're I don't utilizing know. across the street, but it would have to depend upon who's allowing us to use the property. I, I, Do you I, know I what I'm saying? So, but those are the things that have to go in mm -hmm. for me to be comfortable into a host agreement. Uh, 
I don't. I'm. Uh, I'll shut up. I'm out. just thinking about the the last the, the the host agreements that I've seen and the host agreements that um, you know we 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 went and researched a lot what uh, what other uh, uh, towns did for host community agreements and I don't recall one where like that like that's the site plan that's the site plan review and the um, the, the planning board of the ZBA again which one of those planning boards. Uh, that's sort of their purview. And the host community agreement didn't really have that kind of thing in it. Does that mean it doesn't have to? It can't. Uh, yeah, so that that's, I guess, something to look into. Right. We're, we're cutting uh, edge here. Anyway. Yeah. yeah you oh, are. you're, you're I, telling me. We're not looking we, for we, the pedestrian yeah. crossing. I mean, that's not part of what we have in our plan. And, and I, I know that. you understand that, but. Um, the traffic, we're going to be trying to push for them to be there and on the same but, side but as if much as possible. But if, but if that if that parking lot is full, right, you've got a problem, and, and we as a town have a problem, and, and I'm, I I can't figure out what the solution is to that. Maybe it's having somebody on staff that's outside in the exterior, making sure that if people are parking at their own risk to potentially be towed, that we're making sure they're at least safe if they yeah. choose to do that. Because I don't have agreements with other businesses as of now to be able to use their property for overflow parking. Well, what, what agreement do you have with the existing businesses there? We're going, going to be, be using, using all the parking that's available right there with the exception of, I think it's four slots for his things. He's going to be moving the trucks to other well, right locations. Now he, he parks probably eight to ten vehicles there. Correct, so. but during the time we're open, things are going to change around that because he knows we need the parking. So he's, he's agreed to move everything. Four spaces of the what twenty or whatever you, you're proposing here. Okay. Yes, and he's agreed to move all of them. He lives like within two houses right. down from. But, but is is that is that uh, an office? Where people come and go during the day for his business as well? Um, yeah, I believe so. I believe he's got like one receptionist lady in there, so that would be one, and then the trucks, whoever is taking the trucks, but it's generally in the morning to the evening, whoever he has for the couple of workers that I've seen there during the times we've been doing measurements and otherwise. Right, but what I'm saying is he's going to have people for his business customer, new customers coming into his no, office. He's no. No, he, he, he's, no, he's, he's an electrician. Have, no. So and he the, just has his employees. Correct. I'm asking, does he have a, a showroom or no, a, sir. a floor? No, or, he has or, no showroom. Or a parts department or customer department where people can come and pick up and do stuff? No. Okay. And the DOT guy that's in the building in the front is already going to be moved out before we start operations as well. So this is where the electrician is? Yeah, um, yes, and that's this correct. Is where your this is where we are, and currently there's a spot right here where the DOT guy is. But we're going to open that wall that you saw, like yeah, in the front. Right. We're going to open that all up, and we're going to have like displays in there, yeah. with room for six, like areas where people can check out. And then when people have questions, education, things of that nature, are going to go over to where that DOT office space was that we're going to open the wall to. My my other question, and I don't mean to sound harsh I just mm -hmm. I'm asking questions that, sure. that, that come no up problem. Um, because we passed our bylaw and our bylaws are bylaw right. um, but it, it, it's similar to the issue we had last summer again if your business plan is underestimating your, your traffic flow and you've got people out the door this is a Relatively speaking, it, it's not a not not a residential place. There are there are people who live in that immediate vicinity. That's correct. There are very few places for the traffic, the lines to go and not start to be a nuisance to the neighbors. And so, and and if if there are fifteen people out there, I, I'm making up right. numbers. I don't. Know. That's fine. You're gonna. You're not gonna muzzle them. No. <laughs> you're, 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 there's going to be noise. Right. And I don't know what your hours are going to be or what you've thought back through, but there's going to be noise. There's going to be visibility. There. I. I, I, I want to see a plan for all these things because I don't think it's just the purview of 
of, 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 of ZBA, the town is responsible for the health and safety of its residents. Mm -hmm. And, 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 I, and I, as part of any host agreement, and there's no way we're gonna pass one tonight. I mean, it's just, right, Brian yeah. had already let yeah. me know yeah. that. Um, I don't think we've ever passed a host agreement. Right, we, that's always that's done right. outside. Um, yeah. Any host agreement has to address a series <coughs> of what ifs. Mm -hmm. And that could range anywhere from, I, I, don't, I don't even know what they'd be at this point. Um, but but noise and, and, and safety are, are have to be the, the top. Well, level. yeah, and, 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 and that's you know for all of us and, and then you guys to discuss afterwards as well. But um, one of the things that we did talk about with <coughs> the community outreach meeting was ours, and I think that some of our discussion was some limitation around that because we did have some residential. I think there's a person here early. I think him, right? He lives like right behind us. Is that true? Do I have the right person? Right yeah. Here. He lives right next door, so we talked about, I know he didn't attend the community outreach meeting, but we spoke after the site plan meeting. Except for in the following meeting. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. After the meeting, we spoke and uh, we talked about some of the things so we could work around the hours so that it's not impeding on the residential piece. So that's something to be discussed regarding what time we're opening, what time we're closing, those things. We talked about that during the outreach meeting as well. Uh, we're going to have people that are going to be able to go into the building, so we're going to have more of an, an area to be able to flow before they're checked in as well. Some of the dispensaries, you just kind of go right in through the door and you go to the right. I've been to a couple of them now in Mass. We're going to have more of an area where they're going to be able to come in, go around the ramp area. So we will have areas where people can stand around that's going to be a little bit more inside and out, where they're not just having those heaters to keep people warm in lines but as the cannabis commission continues to approve locations the populations should fizzle out a little bit more nita was an exception they were a medical dispensary and they got first dibs into the um licensing part along with economic empowerment applicants so i don't foresee that being as large of an issue at all as you know you were looking at people at that point coming 16 hours because it was the first dispensary open along with Laycaster, which is obviously on the other neck of the woods of Mass than we are. So I think that we're gonna be a Lester, lot more control. Right. Lester. I'm sorry. Lester. Lester. Yeah, yeah, Lester. yeah, I apologize, Lester. yeah, for the name. But yeah, there was like two when they were open, so I think that we're gonna have things a little bit better by the time that we're approved and with foot traffic and things. I wanna open this up, what questions do you guys have before I open So are you? You're just renting the building in a space, or are you owning? No, we're renting the building from Steve. Yes. Okay, and have you looked at additional parking, adjacent parcels, or anywhere else other than, I guess, across the street or whatever? On Not at this time. Road? No, I haven't looked at any on across the street or whatever. I just know kind of what's in the yeah. area. That's about it. Yeah. There isn't anything immediately across the street. There isn't. It's just a red barn. And, and what's well, behind? What's behind this parcel? Just open land, or is there another? Behind the parcels, land to the right is a house. To the left is more house businesses. So directly behind is just open land. It'd be like between you and 91, it looks like. Correct. Well, and, and some I, open and some forest. Yeah. Open. Honestly, I, I, I can't imagine in a million years that we'd be comfortable with having parking south or north on the same side, because then that is going to be even more people on the highway for an extended period of time right and i'm not saying that i'm thrilled with crossing right but that's 10 seconds as opposed to strolling up 510 like you're on chestnut plain road and it's just not as safe mm -hmm. um i want to open this up in a and i know that this is a contentious issue and i would ask that people be um polite and, and an understanding of people, let people have their say, and and then um, the next person can have their say. But but again, keep in mind this is not the ZBA. This is our purview is a is a community host agreement that is very different than the ZBA process. We can ask for things, um, but it is a very different kettle of fish than the hearing that the ZBA ran two weeks ago, whenever it was. So please, and, and I'll and I'll acknowledge you as you raise your hands and stuff like that but please state your name where you live and then your piece 
Well, let's go first since we've got a lot going on there. Mr. Korpiansky, does everybody get a chance here? Uh, with Lisa and I own 15 State Road and 19 State Road. Um, there's a whole host of concerns that we as abutters have associated with your business model and the fact that it's going to be there. Just a tremendous host of concerns. Um, if I were to start, the consideration that when I was in Northampton on a number of occasions taking a look at the traffic model that's in Northampton, there's, there's a, they have 40 or 20, 30 spots that are in front of the dispensary there. They have additional parking on Route 5. They have additional parking at um, the Gazette, additional parking at the hotel, additional parking at the bowling alley, additional parking at the uh, car wash. Uh, I talked about Officer Joe Bars. He's a uh, <coughs> trooper in Northampton. He's responsible for taking care of the traffic within Northampton for like um, the Arts Festival and um, some of the other events that are in town. He, my conversation with him was that they, on average they deal with 2,000 cars a day and that's why they have three troopers there. They start from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. You're talking about the dispensary? The dispensary in Northampton. Yeah. Um, and at any given time uh, I had been in there uh, he told me, he says, just sit down and you know, pick 15 minutes and see what there is for traffic. And then within a 15 minute period, there's 22 cars that simply leave the dispensary from that lot right in front of the dispensary. That doesn't include the 16 people that left to go outside parking. So the, the parking model, I, I have a real hard time understanding where you get your numbers from when you look at other previous dispensaries and the models that they hold. I understand your argument and I understand why you would want to make the argument that the more there are of dispensaries that the less the model goes down but the the argument counter argument to that is when I spoke to people within the dispensary they said that they don't compete with East Stanton because they carry different products so there's more reason to travel from dispensary to dispensary plus the, the limits that are involved encourage people to visit a dispensary four times if they need to be able to get the maximum limit for the day or if they want to visit one dispensary twice and they go to the other dispensary for something else they can do that. I can go to any liquor store and I can buy the liquor store out but I can't go to a dispensary and buy everything that I want. So what I saw in Northampton is, is license plates from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, um, New York, Connecticut, all, all across the East Coast. It's extraordinary how many cars from across the East Coast are in Northampton. If you go, Lisa and I went to East, uh, East, uh, East Stanton store, uh, INSA, and, and we got the same thing, but they're in a better spot. I mean, their spot's really kind of nice. It's behind where the old Spalding was. They have plus 160 some odd spaces available to them. No, People, they actually don't. You have to park over in the back and frequently they there too. They have a lot of parking back there. And walk all the way down near the river. But they still have more parking than you do. Overflow didn't. parking, correct, at this point, yes. Okay. Okay. My point is, is, is I'm concerned that what you're going to end up having is a lot of people parking on the road. That's going to create an issue. I know that state police don't enforce it, but it's going to be incumbent on the town police to be able to enforce that. The other concern that I have is traffic between businesses. I know that Muffin, at Muffins, they just expended, extended the parking space and they made it double their size, which doesn't include... It, it, you don't keep anybody from... If, they, if somebody wants to park there and buy a coffee, they can't even if they say, you know, you can't park here. But that encourages people that they want to buy a coffee and then walk over and buy a joint. They can, or vice versa. That puts people in the road, like you had mentioned before, also crossing the highway. We have a lot of trucks. Uh, we have the um, Verizon trucks. We have tractors going down the road. We have tractor trailers. We have all the traffic associated with CNS, the morning shift and the afternoon shifts and evening shifts. The other thing that I've made notice to is the fact that depending on what your hours are in the winter time, it'll be dark on the road when people are making that travel. That means you're going to have to do something about lighting, which incumbents on, which, which becomes uh, uh, an incumbents on my family to add additional lighting in front of our home as we're already dealing with an extraordinary. I can make shadow puppets of my house at this point. You know, do we have to go through even more lighting so you can have a business model? Um, and which brings us back to lighting of your business for security. Because again, if I get a big bow window, I'm, I'm, the only place that I can see black is looking out my front bow window towards that building and you're going to cover it with lights. All of a sudden I got, I got windows on three sides of that house and 
we got blankets and pillows in the windows so my kids can sleep now. Um, I'm also concerned about the fact that the, the proximity of our driveway at 15 State Road is right on the border of that property line. When the bookstore had us had was there, they had one weekend a year that they would have a sale. And it got to a point where people would drive down our driveway so often, I had to give uh, Barbara the right to be able to use the driveway so they could park along the building and I would park the truck where the telephone pole was to try to keep them from going any further. Because folks would come down and drive around back and drive to the back field. And they were all out of state, they don't know any better, but they're still doing it. And it makes it incumbent on me to keep them out of my own driveway. So what, ends up, what I can see absolutely happening is it becomes a problem for my family and a safety for my family. People not realizing that that's not your driveway because you got two driveways already. So how do you tell the difference when you're from out of state and your first time visiting and everybody's down mine? Well, I can put up signs, but that's not gonna stop anybody. My brother was concerned he was unable to be here. When the bookstore would have their sales, they'd also park in front of his barn and, and limit his access. Um, There's issues with people standing in, and it's in the concept of privacy, when you have all these people standing on our ability to use our property for our respite. Our home is our respite. It's our sanctuary. It's the only one we got. I don't want to see that taken away. I know talking with my neighbors, Jen and Jan, they're concerned about people parking, buying a ear of corn, deciding to walk to your store. The problem is, is that there's alternate parking, good reasons for other people being somewhere else. The fact that they can decide to walk to your, your shop, and most likely will, create a traffic nuisance and a, and a pedestrian hazard, which will become incumbent on the town to have to manage it. And I mean, there's, there's a number of issues that we have as a concern associated with this. And it disproportionately affects our family. And, you know, I was talking with uh, Paul and Evelyn live just to the north of us. They got a three-bedroom house. And the concern ends up being a real one. How do you sell a three-bedroom house to a family who's going to put their kids at the road where the bus is going to pick them up when you're stuck between a liquor store and a pot shop? And you have all that traffic. And you, it, that traffic model is a concern. I, mean, I told you before, we got morning traffic, we got afternoon traffic, we got bus traffic in the morning. If you open up in the morning before the buses show up, they're going to be involved in this process as well. Uh, I'm sure I've missed something on top of my list, but I'm going to reside but that. The two big ones I'm hearing are traffic and the parking, which is a multifaceted problem, nope. especially nope. for and close of others. I'm at, the, I'm at the assessor's maps here, so I know exactly what properties you're talking about. I think the lighting was an issue. I mean, I, I heard and, 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 Yeah, lighting. Like, well, the other thing with the lighting, and um, the, the, the whole back of that building is windows. And when the right. light gets left on at night, it completely it floods the, the back of the property. I mean, the whole house property line is flooded. If you're working late at night right. and you leave that open, I mean, there's no chance of sleeping whatsoever. It's well, going to be I like living next to a wall. a lot of legitimate concerns that I think that we can address during the time. I mean, I don't want to take away someone's sanctuary to their home for what we're trying to do. I think that there's ways that we can work it out with the abutters where we put in the proper lighting where he's okay with it so that he's not inconvenienced and his family is. And we'll of course do everything we can to make sure people aren't plowing down his you know, driveway and things of that nature. Right. I mean, but I think he, he admitted it's not malicious. They just don't know. No, but that. still, just, I mean, yeah. it, but he you makes a good point. All right. the time going down that driveway. Right. right. And you have to chase them out all the time. Right, and that's not fair to them. So that's something that I think right. we need to do as a business and making sure that that doesn't happen and working kindly but with him. But your, your biggest efforts aren't going to solve, solve I'm sorry, that. I didn't hear what you said. Your biggest efforts aren't going to solve that problem, unfortunately. You, you, if you're dealing with a model that draws everybody from New England into Massachusetts, you can't possibly get the message out to everyone in New England who will be <coughs> residing to your store for to do business to recognize whether there's a parking space they shouldn't be going down. Well, over time, you're going to have, like I said, we're going to have a boutique brand that's going to be different than others. So we hope to have like the same frequent people, and we can do the best that we can. And that, that gets to the other point that I mentioned earlier, is the yes. fact that when I talk with folks in North Northampton and East Stanton, they sell such a different product that, the, that people coming from out of state go to both places. And, it, and so that makes it really interesting to want to come to your spot, and especially it's really easy to get to it. Of course. Like if, just like Northampton, 
it's easy to get on and off. It's also, Waitley is very easy to get on and off. As You're far right. as a business model, I understand why you would pick a spot like that. I just don't think it's a really good spot and location. You have too many residential homes that are, I mean, yes, I know that we're in a commercial district, but they're residential homes and they've been, I mean, our, my house has been a residential home since 1924. And it was commercial, you know, 100 years before we got involved. And I can assure you that I take what you say and I truly care. And I'm saying that whatever I can, if approved, we will work on. Light, lighting is 24 hours for security purposes, correct? For the most part, yes. I plan to have everything taken out on a nightly basis for cash, for but security. But you still, but in terms of, I, I believe that for security, the According to the, the product Commission? requires 24-hour security, no? But no. you can do the infrared cameras, so okay. you don't have to have a visible light. And I other, wouldn't want light reflecting on his front window either. That's just rude. Other comments? Uh, Robert Phil, uh, on State Road. What's, uh, what, what are your hours plan to be? Well, we kind of talked about that a little bit at the community meeting. I know that that was negotiable. It was something that we hadn't discussed fully yet, but it is negotiable. I know, I think somebody mentioned something about till 7 at night or whatever. I know need is open from 10 to 10. I, and I think they're open 10 to 10, seven days a week, if I'm correct. So well, I'm open I'm, I'm to that. I'm just thinking, what, what, I'm, I'm, what are your hours going to be, though? What do you? I think we're looking at probably a 10 to 7. 10 in the morning until 7 at night? Yeah. Yes. And weekends? Yes. Both days? Yes. Okay. Other questions? What is, there, there's another... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I thought you were done, so I apologize. Okay. Your traffic study. Yes. What's it based on? I mean, is it a mass DLT study? Is it uh, something that... <clears throat> I'm sure he pulled the information from that. It was on the zoning map okay. along with my business plan. Okay, so if you yes. have parking... So Muffins lets them park. Say Muffins lets you park mm -hmm. over there. What are you going to do about the people crossing the street? Well, that was my question. I, I mean, I, is, right. it, is it the state, the town, you're going to put a crosswalk in there? No, I mean, because the trucks I'm come by that there, that somebody's going to get would killed. Be responsible. No, I think that that would be something we would be responsible for, making sure of. If we're seeing a, you know, that going on, or if it's inevitable that that's going but on, that's then highway. that's something we are responsible. We need to hire, just like security. You have to hire private security. You can't hire corporations because the, F, the um, federal government won't allow for banking. So there's a lot of things you have to hire privately and do a little different in this type of industry. And I'm not opposed to doing that. I don't it, want to see it, anyone it get hurt. That, it may be that a police detail needs to be there during operating hours. hours. That's yeah. correct, and that's a gr that's um, part of the host agreement piece. Um, yeah, but what are the, the police going to take care of? Well, I mean, they, are they are they going to shag the people off the side of the road? Are they going to stop the people from turning around in people's driveways? Are they going to be chasing them down his driveway and, and tell no, them to get I out of there? I mean, more in terms of the, the, the traffic you mentioned, safe well, for the sidewalk there. I yeah, understand you know, that. You know, I understand that. If they want to walk down the side of the road, it's not a sidewalk on either side of that road. That's correct. Yeah, you know, and that's not what I mean. That's not what we put. But within 300 feet, there's a dip in the road, and I don't know if you ever watch them trucks come out of that dip. Somebody pulls out of there and they want to go 10 miles an hour. They are going to get killed when one of the valley trucks comes whipping up through there, loaded, or, or a dump truck. I mean, that's that's a busy part of the road. You know, people get out of uh, Yankee Candle, the CNS traffic. There's a lot of traffic. That's if we anticipate all this business. I mean, I think it would be great. okay. So you got 17 spots. Okay, how many employees are you gonna have? Mm, I would say six to seven. Okay, so you now you're down to 10. We'll carpool. We're gonna hire people from locally, so we're yeah, gonna we do the best that we can, right? But we're gonna do the best that we can for all that. We've we've put that into the plan. Uh, we don't anticipate that much overflow. If there is, we'll definitely be on board with taking care of that I can assure you of that what, what's the average <clears throat> I, I, if I were a restaurant I'd know how long a customer was in my my building from start to finish uh, I would say from the times from all the dispensaries that I've gone to um, if you know what you want it kind of depends on the customer. If you're just learning for the first time, you could be there for maybe 30 minutes once you get in the door. But if I'm going in and you know exactly what you want, generally speaking, if you guys have frequented any of them, they hand you the menu as soon as you're in the line. So you get that menu, you kind of get a, you know, forward 
movement towards you know deciding what you want as soon as you get in you make that decision so when you're walking into them you're going right into a group like a panel like you guys to be able to purchase right then and there so it could be a couple of minutes if there's not a lot of people there I've gone in and out of the Northampton dispensary within five minutes if you know what you want boom but if you, you know you need more education we're there for that too I have two questions here uh, there is another business further down that sells what jewel or the smoking the vaping, the vaping, the vaping stuff Do, is there parking and problems with that business and and, and have police been there or, or state police been there to control anything or I don't think they have enough valve volume to be there. Yeah. there's virtually no parking yeah, there's virtually no, yeah, there's very little parking available there in the first place. Okay, the second comment, uh, to control the parking somewhat, have you, is it possible or have you thought of uh, making a business open by appointment only so you can control how many people are there and you say that, you know, these people come at 10, these come at 11, these come 12, you're only open by appointment, not people what, driving by or that, that's to a others? legitimate concern as well um, one of the things that the dispensaries have done is they have an online process where you can register all your information ahead of time online so that you can basically go in go into another line if you've already pre-registered so a lot of them have two lines I know at INSA and both in NIDA both have that where you go in if you're a medical customer you're going in alongside of that person that went home after they left re pre-registered online you know what you want you order boom you're in and out that type of thing and then you have the other line for the people that are just kind of like your walk-ins but does that tell them what time they come to pick up the product does no it's just that? within the day we could work on that though that's you not do that is that possible yes I mean, it's probably absolutely. Gonna limit, limit your customer base if no but i think that it, if it was within a couple hours i don't think anyone i think that when people are ordering they're probably ordering so that they can pick it up you know before probably after work given our hour right. span but they're probably going to say hey then i'm going to be here between five and seven i don't think that that's a rough thing to try to, to we can try our best to regulate that that people come within that time yes assign everybody an hour or a time period to come so mm -hmm. everybody doesn't show up at between five and seven at night that's right um right. yeah rich how would you regulate the, the people that would come off traffic i mean in other words if you just show up because they know you're open how would you regulate that if you were trying to do if you uh, by appointment only <laughs> would, like the walk-in folks, walk folks yeah. we would still have them that would be part of the wouldn't process. The it problem. wouldn't solve the whole problem, no. Unless, it was um, unless no. The, the security, it their online security would tell people that it, you're, you can't enter without an appointment, so go register online. And that would be the folks over there. And it's much easier to do it that way to begin with, but we could, I wouldn't limit our business to just appointment only, no. So I'm wondering if, again, because our job in a host community agreement is to maximize public safety, help <coughs> public safety. And I want to keep it in that purview because it's the purview that we have as opposed to somebody else. I, I guess I'm wondering, have the people who are concerned, rightfully so, about security and, and, and safety of family, what have you, is there any interest, and I'm, I'm blue sky in this, so I apologize for that, but is there any interest to sort of brainstorm what could go in one of these documents to maximize health and public safety? Again, it, it may be a crazy idea, I'm just asking. The only thing I could consider you can, wait, I, I, hold, hold on, Rich. Jim, you can, you can have all the parking you want, okay? I've seen it at Muffins thousands of times that there's parking spaces open there. People park across the street, run across the street into Muffins. What are you going to do about it? She can have all the parking she wants there, but people don't like to walk. They find, you know, they try to do the most convenient thing for them. So how can you police that parking across the street? 
but it still have parking spaces on that side. Yeah. You're saying you've seen people park across the street from muffins? Oh yeah, all the, the time. All the time. Didn't all really, I didn't notice. I didn't oh, yeah. realize they that. Park by the woods, and yeah. then they walk across the street. I've it's seen two or three cars there. Really? Yeah. Up with all their parking. Yes. So yeah. Right street. next to the store, by the way. Right. It, to, right. To, to to pull all the way into the parking lot, all the way down. I, I had I had no idea about that. You know, just going to say. You can do what you want to do, and you can do what you can do, but you're not going to police people. You know, they're going to do what they want. I think literally it would have to be a police officer to police. Those are professionals. Right. They can do no, the policing. Can't yeah. Right. Right. So, so if, that, right. Right. if it comes to that. <laughs> then you're going to cross the street at this spot. Right. Not yeah. down the road at this spot. And if right. you do, do we have a jaywalking bylaw in Whaley? I doubt it, but I, I think she would probably have to have a police officer there anyway, right. you know, for security. Yeah. And, and, and so, yeah. you know, yeah. What's well, inside, though, Jim? Well, outside as well. The well, if part. you're going to be having the the, if we're talking about police either way, if it's some of the that we have to pay, we're, I believe we have to pay the off duty anyway. Right. So either way, we're paying for the off duty to police and make sure the traffic, but we also mm -hmm. want to make sure that there's additional security in so. in house while during our yeah. open time as well. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So absolutely. Two police officers. Okay. No, it, I mean that one would be a legitimate change. police officer for the public safety, <coughs> but the one inside would be. I, I found these guys um, out of this strong box company, and there are a lot of retired. Uh, Marines as well as yeah. um, sort of a Pinkerton kind of thing yeah yeah and they're armed as but, well yeah. so but I would think that it right. would be a police detail doing traffic correct and it would be your hired security inside doing your security that's correct yes okay. I thought I heard it the opposite the first time yeah no I apologize maybe then, I said something out of turn I apologize and I, I also hear things out of turn sometimes. <laughs> Rich you were gonna say something I'm really concerned about the, the, the potential of people stopping at Muffins Market and then making that walk through some, because it's a very dangerous yeah, place. Yeah, that's right up here. It's, it's scary. Well, place. we've had three people die within 100 feet of that house and, and it, with, over the years, and it, and it's a number of accidents over there. And I, I'm really concerned about people being in the road, particularly as it's getting closer to winter and it's getting darker earlier. And the length of time they have to be in the road when it's dark, you've got a lot of time and it's oncoming traffic coming from the north, and they're not going to see folks in the road, even if you have the trail officer there. So trying to maintain that, I'm not sure how you keep those people safe without encumbering, encumbering our family with lighting that ends up being 24 hours a day, and adding police coverage. Well, we wouldn't be open 24 hours, and we would definitely no, work the, on all the but shining. But the only way you could do lighting would reasonably there would be street lighting, and I'm not sure what's allowed for street lighting, but it would be obnoxious, realistically, for it to be in front of residential homes. We're already dealing with an excessive amount of street, you know, lighting. Right. Um, but then, but that's the problem that I see. That's a huge problem is when folks are walking because they have there's nothing to stop somebody from stopping buying a cup of coffee and, and going for a joint it's just okay. it's nothing's going to stop anybody from doing it mm -hmm. there's nothing that keeps a person from walking on group five okay. monty's march was always down with group five all the time he, he, nothing can stop right. nothing illegal about it. nothing illegal about it so if, if if that ends up being the model and the most probable model and that's the most parking and the closest parking then that's where you're going to get most of your traffic is is walking traffic to the building and then it becomes an issue particularly as you start getting into the, the, the later hours of the year where you're gonna if you're open till eight you know seven o'clock and then and, and it's dark at five mm -hmm. or four o'clock you know right you're gonna be dealing with people that walking in the dark right and the other thing to think about in the winter when they plow the snow they're not clearing you know the roads yeah. that well so where are people gonna they be walking in the street you know, so that's something to really think about. Keith does a good job. Keith does a good no, job. No, he does a great job, but it's even still. Oh, no, that's right. Don't blow that. that. No. But I was just trying to have your back. No, but I mean, people aren't going to want to walk in the snow yeah. and the gravel. They're going to walk in the paved road is what's going to happen. So you're having them in the street. So mm -hmm. it's something seriously to think about. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, the only thing I could consider in any way, shape, or form is if there was some kind of off-site that was recognized for parking with a shovel. But then you end up with another problem with you have a shuttle every 15 minutes sitting on the side of the road offloading and loading back on. So 
No, it could pull in the parking lot. So well, there's not a lot of room for a shuttle to pull in. Well, in the front, we, we have a little bit along with the uh, don't have the, much. the shrubbery so that we're putting you, in there. You don't have much. Okay. But there, but there's enough right now where cars are parking right in the front. So well, we right now, but that there. that model is not going to work for you guys. True. We're going to put some shrubbery in there instead because we don't want to encourage people to back into Route 5. So as far as brainstorming on the traffic concerns, I've spent a tremendous amount of time trying to see how it could work, and I'm not finding a good model that makes it work very well, if at all. And, and I get real concerned because here we, you know, we're we got three houses that are stuck between the traffic. I'm listening. And, and we've had plenty of experience of people getting hurt on that road. And and there's not a good system to, to keep those people safe as far as I can see. Now, if you can come up with one, then, you know, that's great. But I have yet to really define one. Because I, I keep thinking, if you put a, if you put a bus, a, a shuttle bus, mm -hmm. you got to have a place for the shuttle bus to go. That's correct. And your, your design does not include a space for a shuttle bus. That's correct. Because otherwise, it would have to be on the road. Mm -hmm. every 15 minutes for as long as it takes to load and offload. Yes. So then now you're modifying the front of your building. Now where do you put the other parking spaces that right. you had in that space? So I'm, I'm just does struggling with it. plan has a, have an estimate of, of when your heavy traffic flow is and when your light traffic flow is? Yeah, I we put it, it. Um, it's inside of yeah, you don't have it on the... Uh, and I'm, Rich, I'm sorry, sorry. I kind of sorry. Off. The, the traffic flow for both East Hampton and North Hampton right. North is Thursday through Sunday is the heaviest traffic. Flow. Right, now I'm seeing hours in the day more than days. Uh, I was there this morning and there was 22 people standing in line at 8.50. In North Hampton? That's the one that's in the traffic. At 8.50. Oh, yeah, thank you. 8.05 this morning, 22 people standing. Standing in line, not inside? Standing in line, standing in line in front of the... Before they opened, you're saying? Yeah, well, 8.05. They opened at 8. So and they were, started. and so they hadn't gotten in yet. They hadn't gotten in yet. Were that there, was this morning. Were there people inside? I, I didn't go inside the boat. Oh, okay. But the fact that you had that many people in cars in the park at, at eight, eight o'clock in the morning. Eight and then we have busing. We have kids getting picked up for school. The bus is not on the road. Okay, this is on the state on the state highway. Are you going to need approval from the state for access or driveway controls or anything? They don't control access. You have access there now, I, I guess, but as far right. as a new business going in, do they? We're not changing use of the business. That wasn't any of the three special permits that we have applied to for the Zoning Board of Appeals, so I would say no. Okay, but for state, being access on a state highway, is there any requirements for access control to a state highway? Uh, as far as I know, we're approved because we're not changing the use, so we're doing the same retail as was there, so I don't know the answer to that question. Um, because we're going to have to talk about all this at some point, mm -hmm. and as you know, we're not gonna, I just want to make sure you're aware of all the other host agreement items that we have beyond security that we've got to, you know, the, 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 the monetary Correct. items that you, you don't have any questions about that at all. Well, shall we assign? Uh, unless anybody else Brian wants to, to, but I think we've covered a lot of stuff, and I don't want to go around in circles either. Um, yeah. I, I think that what I'd like to ask, because it's our standard operating procedure on on host agreements, um, the person to my the two people to my far right are usually designated as, as the people to craft the host community agreement. Um, and because it's a kind of a, a, a non-productive way to create the host community agreement in this setting, um, I'm going to ask Joyce and Brian to craft the agreement with language based upon what they've heard in this meeting, yep. and then we'll open it back up when we have something to review. Um, I yeah. believe we can make it, and correct me if I'm wrong, we can make it a public document to, for people to digest before we discuss it in a meeting, in a subsequent meeting? <clears throat> that's up to you. Yeah. I mean, Joyce, I'll leave that to you as to whether you think that's oh, a good okay. idea or not. So, so this is where, um, yeah, so we, we probably have to look at this. But this is something where I'm assuming, like Rich and Lisa, you would like to see the host community agreement right. uh, before 
uh, a meeting where it's discussed. So you're not and reading I know normally we, we, we give each other copies, but I, I don't see any reason why not to let, uh, we might not have it until 48 hours before the meeting, right? But, uh, but I don't see any problem with uh, a draft going out and realizing it's a draft. Um, and uh, we probably don't want to step on the ZBA's toes too much, so we're probably in the process of figuring this out, talk to them. Um, about what, what their plans are too. They want to host a community agreement before they'll talk to you about traffic. That's studies. correct. Um, so, and, and there is, there, I, I, there's, there's different people have different turfs, right? And I, I'll, we can look into how much public safety stuff we can put in a host community agreement, but I think at some point we start stepping on the ZBA's toes. And I, so I don't know where that line is because I haven't looked yet. But that's something it, that I think to look It may forward. be worth a conversation with the commission as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're real talking. So. Well, I know. I mean, I'm happy to expedite okay. that discussion okay. because I know one of them well. Okay. Okay, send me their contact information, please. So, yeah. <coughs> so, so I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll take, I'm scheduled. happy to take that on. This has to be scheduled as a continuing hearing or anything? Or? It's not a public hearing. It's, it's not, not a public hearing. It, okay. it just will, when, when this process is done over here we'll notify everybody when it's back on the agenda do we have yeah. any idea of when that is because that's what I'm waiting for to apply to the Commission as well yeah. as I need that information to be able to wait we we're already pushed right. off from that other meeting right. that we had and we had to withdraw applications so we're looking at May now because uh -huh. they wouldn't take us until then yeah so that's I'm just looking guys. forward to having yeah. it so I can just apply right right right, right. Um, the, uh, right now we're sort of in it's what we call town meeting season. Mm -hmm. um, and I think particularly the next two weeks are very busy with uh, getting budgets finalized, getting articles, uh, like Brian, Brian is like way crazy busy as is the administrative system. So I, I would hesitate to promise our next meeting we could have something that's worth discussing. I'd be a little more comfortable with, uh, are we meeting on the 24th? That's the town meeting. So. No. The town meeting is the 30th. I think we are. What? Yeah, that's yeah, that, that, that would be your regular meeting. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. So, but I think realistically, and I get your, you, you need to, right. to move um, first meeting in May, it sounds like, at this point. So we're not meeting on the 24th? No, we what are. What is the but meeting for the zoning board? If, if, things will, if you have time, if, if Brian okay. has time as he puts together budgets and gets ready for town meeting, which is the week right. after that. That's my only. Right, right. Well, I think, yeah. Um, and CBA meets the first week of the month, so if it's right. so May, if we don't, to June. Right, so, I so see, if yeah. we don't, yeah, because we needed to get the information yeah. out ahead of time because yeah. we got, because we were all prepared to go that night and we got it. Got it, okay. Great. Um, 24th of June. So, I mean, we, I think we can, I'm just, it, we could try for the 10th, but I think that's unrealistic mm -hmm. to think that could happen. I agree. I think the 24th, um, is still going to be um, a bit of work, but uh, I think it's a lot more realistic than the, the 10th. So I think we could aim for the 24th. We got to start getting a few things um, going soon because we can't wait till the, like the 17th or something like that. But but that, that, you know we've got at least a place to start. We have a starting right. point with our other host community agreements, and we've got to look into what other kinds of things can be specified in terms of stuff that people have. Uh, expressed and and I, I think the most serious being the people walking on the highway. That, right. that's, a, that's a real public safety hazard, and we've got to we've got to think about how we can sort that out. So if we have the meeting on the twenty fourth, I will be able to apply for the zoning board of appeals for May if I come the next day. Yeah. Um, assuming we are in agreement. Yes. Right. Assuming we're in agreement. Right. That's right. We would bring the draft. We it could be amended if there were need to amend it and and especially I mean you you all know if you think of things that you want you, you can tell us before the meeting <laughs> right and that's that's uh, uh, just to be uh, fair and well efficient about about things yeah we can post it online right and we can we can post it online we can yeah, for anybody yes yeah, so I, I sort of feel like understood. we we should let everybody have it not just not just the privileged few <laughs> right Okay. Um, Sounds good. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you guys.
Okay, we are running painfully behind, which we shouldn't be surprised at. Brian created Brian a Morgan. ridiculous agenda. Uh, You're very popular. We are popular. We Mustang are Renewable people. Power Ventures? Yes, sir. Come on up. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to introduce John Dewey. Okay. And that's the essential purpose of his being here today. You know who I am, I'm Richard Ellis. And John is a, a principal at a company called Mustang. Uh, Mustang Renewable Power Ventures. Yeah. And, um, and, and he's here to, uh, he just, uh, we're here to make an introduction. We won't take too much of your time. So John, sure. go ahead, tell them what you're up to. Uh, we submitted last night to the planning board an application for a site plan review for a cultivation facility to be located at uh, DeWitt Thompson's existing greenhouse across from the police station. Uh, we were interested in purchasing uh, Mr. Thompson's facility and converting the use over into a cultivation facility. We are a company that's experienced in greenhouse development and we also have a lot of experience with renewable energy projects. We, however, are not the ultimate cultivator or tenant. We're looking to be a landlord and an owner of the facility that will complete all the upgrades to the facility, but we're in discussions with prospective tenants. Once we identify a tenant, the tenant would actually have to go through the special permit application process with the ZBA and with the state licensing folks. So at this point, we've submitted the site plan review to the planning board so we get a feel for what some of the issues are related to the conversion of the facility from its current use, agricultural, growing basil, to converted to cannabis cultivation. Um, I'm sure we can share with you the application we submitted to the planning board. We're in discussions with Brian, and that's gonna lead to a discussion with town council about our business model, which is a little different being a landlord owner of a facility and then having a tenant or a third party that becomes the uh, applicant for the special permit. Uh, we're entertaining the possibility of moving forward with an application to the zoning board and seeking a zoning board approval potentially subject to the approval of the tenant at a subsequent date. So the bylaws are really specific that you can't transfer an approval so we would, don't want to run afoul of the specifics in the bylaws. So what we're seeking is something that hadn't been contemplated when the bylaws were created, where you have a separate owner, landlord of the facility, and then a separate tenant uh, that would be the special permit uh, recipient and also the approved through the CCC. So we just want to introduce ourselves. We want to give you a chance to ask any questions uh, tonight, if you can think of any. We'll share with you the planning board uh, application we submitted and give you a heads up that at some point we'd be coming back to you with our tenant and host community agreement discussion. Uh, in general the facility is going to be as it is today. We're not proposing any additional square footage. Uh, the greenhouse would have some upgrades interior and we're also looking at a solid panel wall system around the outside because we have to regulate the lighting. Yep. And also a solid panel has greater um, insulation. Um, our power is gonna go up, but we do have an energy efficiency plan. There's about 600 kilowatts of solar on the property already today. Um, our water consumption is estimated to be the status quo with what DeWitt is using for his facility in terms of peak demand. Um, in terms of employee count, it's roughly the same as what he's using today. Uh, during his harvest season, it'll continue to be in the 20 to 25 um, uh, total employees. We've already met with the fire chief and the police chief. We've got their concerns. Security, we don't anticipate a 24-7 a security guard. It's more infrared cameras and motion detectors and things like that. Uh, we have an odor control system, which is a, a misting fog system that's been used in a number of other similar facilities uh, in a few other states, and the uh, specs on that are included in the planning board application. So we're very sensitive to the typical, typical concerns, traffic, 
lighting, odor. Um, we're looking to maintain really a status quo situation in a facility that is a large facility. The state um, regs allow up to 100,000 square foot of growth under canopy, and that's what's contemplated in this facility. Even though the building footprint is larger, it's about 160,000 square foot, so the difference from 100 to 160 would be other office space and lab space and other things related to uh, cultivation. So it's, it's a large project, but it's something that we believe is compliant with your bylaws. It's what was anticipated in terms of a conversion. Um, the facility is zoned appropriately for it. We've had meetings with uh, FERCOG and the building inspector. We will have to submit for a building permit for our wall panelized system. We'll also be adding a uh, septic tank system for uh, new employee bathrooms that we'll include. Um, we've evaluated the possibility of increasing the solar system. Um, we've had some discussions with Eversource. They say they would prefer if we're a net consumer of power given the amount of solar that's in the area. Um, also, we don't have access to some of the recs that were available when the existing solar system was put in place. So it is not as uh, financially beneficial as it was a couple of years ago. So with that, happy to entertain any questions you can think of. It's just sort of an introduction, uh, give you a heads up of what's coming your way after we get through planning board, have a discussion with Brian, town council about our unique um, zoning board special permit sequencing that we like to pursue. Well, what are you gonna do with the open land that's on the west side of the greenhouses? Right now, we don't have any plans for that. Um, we have to be concerned that if there's any uh, outside agricultural activity, is there any potential transmission of any um, pollen or seeds or things like that that would be in conflict with what's being grown inside the facility. So at the moment, there's no plans other than, let's say, we'll maintain the agricultural character of the property, but we're not sure what crop might go on the outside. Did, who farms that right now? Did, do you does. farm the, the open space as well in front? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if you had the whole or not. property. Is and he's got some rosemary in places out there. Herbs, yeah. herbs and vegetables generally. Stuff that I can't yeah. identify. <laughs> yeah. So will, will access change? What, now your access is on both roads, or is that going to change? Primary access is on Christian Lane, and what we call secondary access would be on State Route 5, and that will be maintained. Uh, we plan a keypad electronic gate at both access routes, but the state route uh, five driveway is really for secondary emergency access. And we'll have plenty of opportunity to meet and you're going to hate me using this word vet the client, the 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 the, 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 the tenants. Absolutely, you know we're in outreach to about half a dozen um, significant tenants that are not currently doing business in the state, but are interested in Massachusetts um, for the unique market opportunity that the state and your community has uh, made available. So do you have other businesses like this, other places around? This is my first um, investment in this space. Most of my businesses are in the renewable energy what they call environmental infrastructure business. Uh, for example, we have a significant, a significant recycling project in Santa Barbara County, California, where we partnered with the county and we've actually taken over the landfill. We're building an advanced recycling facility that will sort through the incoming waste, recover recyclables from trash, and divert organic compostable material into an anaerobic digestion facility. So that project includes about six megawatts of renewable energy and turning internal combustion engines. I get involved in this space because my partners in the greenhouse world are very involved in using the combined heat and power energy systems because greenhouses can benefit from the on-site production of energy, heat, and even including the exhaust because the exhaust has CO2, which is beneficial 
for the, the green leafy plants. So my interest is coming in on the renewable energy side and I've partnered with some greenhouse uh, experts that have been involved in greenhouse infrastructure. For example, they sold to DeWitt many years ago part of his humidification system. And then we have a partner who is actually uh, an attorney in Boston who's very involved in licensing and compliance. So I'm, my background's really in the real estate, renewable energy, development side, my partner's in the greenhouse development and licensing and compliance. So we've formed a team to pursue opportunities like this. Because the greenhouses could serve as a heat sink for some of the renewable energy. Exactly. Potentially. Uh, unfortunately, so, Berkshire Gas does not have the ability to give us more natural gas to use one of these combined heat and power systems. So we're probably gonna increase our power consumption for the heating uh, but we do our best in terms of energy efficiency with the insulation and computer-controlled <laughs> lighting and heating systems and things like that. So your purchase of the property is contingent on the tenant being approved by the town and CCC? Exactly. And how many tenants do you expect you would have? This would be a single tenant facility. Single tenant. Yes. And your ideal time? We are... Um, in discussions with our prospective tenants, we think that we'll identify them within the next 30 days. Probably sign a letter of intent uh, in the month of May. I would hope to be back in front of you folks and discussing a host community agreement late May or June, something like that. That host, if I were the king of host community agreements and I got my say, that host community agreement would have, because of the visibility of this project, would have, you can't even imagine how much, educa how much educational, uh, many components would be a part of, of that. Bus routes go past there. It's going to be visible if this goes through. So we need to be very cognizant. That we've, we've already this started an opportunity in my book. We've already started outreach effort to the abutters and had our first meeting with uh, one of our next door neighbors tonight. We met with police and fire last week, so we've started our outreach to, uh, to the best of our ability, but we understand this is a process. <clears throat> it was very good to be here tonight and hear the concerns from a retail perspective. Retail has a lot of different issues compared to cultivation. Yep. We like to think of our facility as being low profile and that it will maintain roughly the same business model as exists today with DeWitt's operation. People are going to know. And, 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 I, and when I say education, I mean with the schools. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we don't mean telling your customers about your products. We don't think that's education. Oh. We think it's having people in the schools tell. Uh, you know. That this stuff's bad for you when you're 17 years old. Yeah. That's a learning opportunity that, that we see. I have two boys that are 21 and 23, and we've been going through that discussion and uh, early child brain development. Mm -hmm. When does the brain stop developing? 18, 21, 25, I'm telling my boys it's 25. Okay. And they listen, right? Yeah. You know, if you all have kids, you know how much yeah. they listen. I guess I have a 23 and a 25. There you go. So there you go. Good. All right. Um, do you guys have any other questions? No? Questions from the public? i uh, just kind of curious. You said internal combustion engine for electricity production. production. Yes. Um, what is your thoughts on that? What is that going to be? Like That's that? ideal, but I don't think it'll work here because of your limitations on your gas supply. So but you did you did mention it, so I was wondering if you had an alternate opinion on that. With the, we're looking at buying our power from EverSource from the grid, in addition to the 600 kW we have on site with the solar. There's propane on that same thing, too. And we have propane as well. Unfortunately, the amount of grid gas we have. Does the, meets the heating needs on the northern half of the facility, but DeWitt could not get enough gas from Berkshire to heat the southern half. So he has to have propane involved on the sea heating of the southern half. We want more vegetation on this They're growing. <laughs> it's really <laughs> growing. Slow. Slow. <laughs> growing real slow. We can work on hedges. Yeah, There's no intention to fence the property. We'd like to maintain the same character it has today. Okay. We're open to different color choices on our panel wall system. You know, we've, we suggested the planning board we maintain you know, off-white, similar to the translucent plastic, 
but if the community felt that it, maybe we go with barn rad, you know, but it is a large building, so that's, we'll look for your a input. A big agricultural mural. <laughs> I was just thinking about it, what kind of a mural should we put up there? We can open it up to a community art project. Um, you seem to know a lot about it. How come you got a renter? How come we have a renter? Yeah, you're, you're going to rent it or lease it. You know all about it. Yes. Oh, why? Yeah. Um, my business is real estate, and I'm not involved in the industry, the cannabis industry, nor are so my partners. So the guy that's renting, how come he ain't here? Because we only signed up our contract with DeWitt about a month ago. Wow. We submitted to planning board last night. So we're in the early stages of our process. You're the guy with the money. We're financing the project. Um, is this place going to be glowing all night long? No. The, um, these plants are diurnal, so they have a regular cycle. Right now, DeWitt has... Because um, it's already glowing all night long, so how much more is it going to be glowing? It is going to be glowing much less be than it's been glowing historically. Dark. Oh, at nighttime it will? It'll be totally yes. dark, yeah. Okay. Because so they're going to put solid sidewalls on. It sounds like you have a specific process already in mind for cultivation. Yes. So that limits the type of tenant <coughs> that you have. Probably, yeah. So you must have, I don't pretend to be an expert on, on, on who's cultivating out there, but I got to believe you don't have more than three to five possible tenants that you're that you're cultivating right now to, to be in there? We have because, a short list of six, okay. but I'll tell you, there's probably over 100 companies that have experience in this size facility uh, in the U.S. and in Canada. But you already know what type of lighting is going to be necessary at night oh, for the type of... So, so Our partners are greenhouse design experts. So we're already doing the design and engineering for the improvements that we know our tenant is going to be seeking. In terms of the lighting and the heating and the infrastructure, irrigation, it, it's it's very similar to what's already in place with his existing basal facility, but it, it's increasing the uh, the heat load uh, by a factor of about four x on what he uses today. How many, how many square feet are you talking about greenhouses? Um, this facility is 160,000 square feet today. We'll have canopy growth plants of no more than 100,000 square feet. I was going to say, isn't that co state code? That's a 100, state code. 100,000 yeah. is the maximum. Right. And is DeWitt going to use the rest of it? Or is somebody going to grow on the rest of it then? No. no. It'll, it'll be other it'll be office good. and lab space and processing. Oh. In the no. greenhouses? Within the greenhouse. There's a central corridor right now where DeWitt does his final packaging. Yeah. So we're going to create an office lab space corridor within the existing building. So you want a lab facility there as well? Well, it, it won't be a, a lab that does any other processing other than our own products. And we're not... Well, uh, it, but a lab facility is different from a cultivation Well, facility. it's our internal... Um, just like a winery has a lab to test its own product before we turn it into a product for shipping. But it will not be licensed as a lab. Oh, it's okay. still a cultivation facility. Okay, understood. Yeah. Rich, you were going to ask a question? Uh, maybe an off-topic question and just thought. You're saying you're going to increase the heat load of the greenhouses? Yes. All right. That's an extraordinarily large greenhouse surface area. Um, What's the environmental effect by increasing that heat load? The amount of heat that will be consumed within the building is consumed within the building. It's not going to create any impact outside of the building. The current, the current energy consumption is a little more than 700 kilowatts. Solar produced about 600. I think solar met about 83% of his needs previously. Our anticipated energy consumption will be in the three and a half to four megawatt range. So we'll be consuming more power from the grid, but it... No, I understand that. It's, it's, it's a megawatt thing that you're talking about. I'm talking about the BTU power consumption that you're talking about. You're, it, I'm trying to understand what it was that you were trying to say. You were saying you were increasing the temperature. It's... Can I just... Yeah, it's mostly from lighting. So it's mostly an electrical increase. But there's an increase in temperature over that the, area. The lights produce a lot of heat and drawing from the grid 
Right, but that's not absorbed, that's reflected. It's, it's within the structure. Your average temperature today is 78? In one zone. Yeah. yeah. Our average temperature is going to range between 78 and 81 degrees right. Fahrenheit. So it's pretty similar. It's similar. Um, his basil is like this. Our plants are a little taller, so they're going to absorb a greater heat uh, demand that's put out by the lights. Okay, there ends up being a point of diminishing returns. You, they can only absorb so much heat before it starts reflecting. It's not going to be You're reflecting. Trying to be as efficient as you can, so you don't have that process. There's every incentive to not consume more power, heat, or light than is absolutely required. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yep. How do you get rid of it? How are you packaging it? You're shipping it. Where's it going? Who takes uh, it? Per How's state it law, it cannot leave state of Massachusetts. Right. So this company will be a wholesale distribution company. So I think currently, uh, well, if you're going to have a hundred thousand square feet of plant, you're going to be producing a lot of weed. Uh, I forget the exact. How many pounds a month? I, I don't know that number because I'm not the greenhouse expert. How about a week. But we have looked at. I I don't know exactly how the the grow side of the business Ooh, works. Figure. You got to know <coughs> pounds per week. Got to be what a thousand. No, I, I think it's a lot less than that. But when you look, when you look at, say, the Colorado model, um, the state of Massachusetts probably could support close to 2 million square feet of cultivation facilities. Well, I, I get all that. But what I'm talking yeah. about is how you ship it. Is it is oh, the it, it'll, be, it it'll, is be a, it? it'll be a daily truck shipment. Yeah. How many trucks? And you guys are packaging it? Um, we need to save those te those questions for a tenant once they're identified. I'm, my expertise is more on the real estate side, and we will have a tenant be in front of you guys probably in the next 90 days. What's the truck traffic can I anticipate being? I've heard it could be one to two trucks a day. In and out? Yes. So four? Exactly. Three, three four? Yes. Is that what you have right now? We have way more than that. You have way more than that? Way more than that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, this can't be just a regular truck taking it out. It'll be an unmarked van, probably. It will be unmarked, likely. Yeah, irregular times. More than likely. Okay. And it probably won't even be a truck. All this right. is the introduction. Yeah, we no, can I save a lot of those yeah. one bills. Um, yeah. All right, I think we're going to cut this off. Good. It's 20 of 9. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Okay. And, thank you. Um, Brian, I'll hear from you. Yes, I haven't got a date yet. Now okay. Available. Well, convenient. I know you have a lot in your plate. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, we're going to. Thank you. I hope everyone Thank stays you. for the rest of this riveting conversation. <laughs> um, Clean Water Trust. Anything? Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. We're going to be here till. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, listen, can I just. Uh, I just want to show. I got pictures of Mark and I've been store of people. So if you want that. I don't feel I don't feel like it needs pictures of people. I don't want to tell you my one concern. Oh, so this is just yeah. a list. Yeah. Okay. You have a list? Well, yeah. But my, my it's not on here. Oh. Um, I, I don't want this guy being placed open on a Sunday. Can't be seen. All right. Yeah. I, I live. Four ounces down. Yeah, I was. I, I will. You know what I'm saying? I've got the. Uh, it, 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 I, and I do hear that. I mean, I, I, I would just like to have. If, if, if this is going to go ahead, I, I want to be able to voice my opinion on hours on this place. I'm not going to. I'm not. This is a place for business. They want to have a business line. But. Um, okay. Okay. You know, you know what I mean? So I, I added that to your list. Okay. Number nine. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Clean Water Trust brand. All right. We got some business to take care of. So all these documents that we're going to look at. Wait, do we, are you? Can we move for this? So this is okay. Oh, you are so good. You are a saint. Saint Liz. Um, Don't let that go to your head. These are all documents related to interim financing for the Clean Water Trust loan, which, as you as you recall, is four hundred forty thousand um, dollars. This is interim borrowing. So this allows us um, to pay for the project costs. We'll submit the. Um, requisitions to Mass DEP, who will approve them, send them to the Clean Water Trust, and once the project is done, we'll do permanent financing. So this is just okay. interim financing, zero percent interest. Oh, um, I like that interest rate. Yeah, it's pretty good, huh? Yeah. 
These guys need to vote this, so oh. I guess we'll let vote first. Or we'll let um, who wants to read this? Oh. Who wants to make choice? I, I don't get to read it's the crayon. Close. So, so you want to move that, and then one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Cliff notes. Cliff uh, notes. You should read the whole thing. Sorry. I, the vice chair of the select board of the town of Waitley, Massachusetts, certify that at a meeting of the board held March 28, 2019, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified, and at which a quorum was present. The following vote was passed, all of which appears upon the official record of the board in my custody. Well, I guess this is a quorum. Well, we'll have Fred sign it. But somebody needs to make this motion. Okay. Um, so, they say, moved, that the town issue a bond or bonds in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed 440000 the bonds, pursuant to Chapter 29C and 44 of the General Laws, and votes of the town passed July 13, 2016, Article 1, which authorized total borrowing of 410000 and amended by a vote of the town, passed December 12, 2018, Article 1, which authorized a total borrower borrowing of $30,000 for the drinking water project identified in such votes. That, in this is number two, that in anticipation of the issuance of the bonds, the treasurer is authorized to issue an interim loan, note or notes, from time to time in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $440,000. That each bond or note shall be issued as a single registered security and sold to the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust at a price determined pursuant to the financing agreement. Uh, this is now up to number four, that the treasurer is authorized to determine the date, the form, the maximum interest rate, that's Lynn, the treasurer, right? Yep. Uh, uh, the form, the maximum interest rate, and the principal maturities of each bond and note, and to execute a financing agreement with the trust with respect to the sale of the bonds and notes. Such date, form, and maturities, and specific interest rates or rates of the bonds and notes to be approved by a majority of the select board and the treasurer, <coughs> and evidenced by their execution of the bonds or notes. Number five, that all action taken by the town and its officers and agents to carry out the project and its financing, including the execution of any loan, commitment, or agreement by the treasurer, are hereby ratified, approved, and confirmed, and Number six, that the treasurer and the other appropriate town officials are each hereby authorized to take any and all actions necessary or convenient to carry out the provisions of this note, including execution, delivery of the financing agreement agreements, and the projected regulatory agreement or agreements relating to the project. We're almost to the end. I further certify that the vote was adopted at a meeting open to the public public and that no vote was taken by secret ballot that no that notice stating the place date and time and agenda of the meeting which agenda included the adoption of the above vote was filed with the town clerk and a copy thereof posted in manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours or in a municipal building that the office of the town clerk is located or if applicable in accordance with an alternative method of notice prescribed and approved by the attorney general as set forth in 940 CMR 29.32 B at least 48 hours not including Saturday Sundays and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the time of the meeting so no deliberations or decisions in connection with the sale of the bond or notes were taken in executive session and that the official record of the meeting was made available to the public promptly and remains available to the public in accordance with General Law C-30A, Section 18 through 25, as amended. I further certify that the vote has not been amended, supplemented, or revoked, and remains in effect on this date, March 27, 2019, for the next three hours at least. So Second. technically, that's the clerk. Yeah, I'll send here. That. I'll grab that back. Second. Oh, okay. I'll send Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Here. I, I do note that Joyce was mocking the need to read that whole thing in her. That's good. Delivery. I just tried to but read it. But now this it's on camera. It's on camera. It's on the record. We got yeah. it. And Lynn is happy. I see Lynn smiling over there. And Amy have to type that as we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the Town of Whaley interim loan note for $440,000. This requires the signature of the select board. 
and okay. signature of the treasurer and the town seal. Okay. Does that other document need a signature as well? What she was reading from? Yeah, that one is certified by just the the clerk of the select board. That would be this That'd guy, be am I right? And so, what I'm passing down now is a certificate that also needs to be signed by the select board, the treasurer, town clerk, which, hey, we got both of them here tonight. Um, and this is a certificate. We, the select board and treasurer of the town of Waitley, certify that we have signed the 440000 Zero percent interim loan note of the town dated March 15th. The note bears the town seal. And you can read all the rest of this if you want. Okay. And there are four of these. Why? I don't know. Are they four identical things? Yes. Okay. For the same reason she had to read the whole thing. <laughs> That's me being. Uh, Thorough. Thorough. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Thorough. I like to always say it's possible about you, Ryan. And if anybody matches up, we can do it all over again. Okay, the pressure's on. Oh, I signed where the treasurer was supposed to sign. Oh, sorry, guys. Well, now you're the treasurer, John. No, thank you. And these are signed, these four are signed by the clerk of the select board. Okay. And this, go to the clerk of the select board, which, okay. who is that? Is that Fred? Fred. Yeah. I'm just going to do the, uh, the thing you were doing for me. Yes. I'll just keep the... Uh, I got this much money in the bank. <laughs> you know? <laughs> We always try to slip in a different document once in a while. Keep my oh, yeah. yeah. A check, right? A check. The deed to his house. Oh, oh we got like the good stamp today. <laughs> it still works well, so I'm, uh, I mean, everyone else is getting the electronic version. Cast, that's so. cast iron. It's kind of work well. Is, yeah. It's heavy duty. And then when there's like an active shooter drill, you have a weapon. They don't make those like they used to. Just don't drop it on your this foot. This one was, uh, did you break it? 1888. Where was it made? Oh, wait, Worcester. It doesn't say. China. Yeah, yeah I don't like so. Not in any. All right, so does that take care of that agenda item, Brian? Yes. Do you have all those, Lynn? I'm getting there. So you see, got a pile to Okay, well, we can go to new business, Poplar Hill Road Extension. So if you look in your packet, there's a request yes. from um, Smith College and Peter Creasy. Uh, that the board begin the process to lay out an extension to Poplar Hill Road. As shown on the plan that's in your packet, street acceptance plan. Yes. Show the ones that came with it. Okay. So, so to begin this process, what? So to begin this process, we need to vote. But the board needs to vote and intend to lay out, um, lay out the street as depicted on the plan of land. So, in terms of the overall process, the board's voting of an intent to lay out the road in this banner would um, kick it over to the planning board, who has 45 days, but has said that they will take it up promptly okay. um, to make a recommendation to this, back to the select board, who would take the actual vote to lay out the road, which would then bring it to town meeting with the annual town meeting, assuming everything goes as planned, and at which residents would accept or reject, but hopefully accept the um, street layout, and at the same time, well, in a separate article, also acquire the necessary easements. Um,
for the street to be laid out. So I move we get this party started. Cool. Well, you got to read the last one, Joyce. You want to send that to somebody I will else? I'll be the official reader uh, tonight. Don't worry, it's not right. as long. Oh, good. Right. I move that the select board vote its intention to lay out a portion of Poplar Hill Road as a town way, as shown on a plan titled Acceptance Plan Poplar Hill Road, Waitley, Massachusetts, dated February. Yeah, this one's a new one. So it's dated um, February 26. 26, 2019. Prepared by the Berkshire Design Group, Inc., and that the select board forward the plan. I mean, March, sorry, March 26th. March 26th. March 26th. March 26th, 2019. Prepared by the Berkshire Design Group, Inc., and that the select board forward the plan to the planning board for its comments and recommendation pursuant to General Law Chapter 24, Section 81G and 81I. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, done. Just a, a quick question, Keith. One of the concerns here was your turnarounds for your snow plows and all. Where, where is that? Is that shown on here? Or is that beyond the map? It'll be on here. We are presently turning around about 'Cause you're not gonna be responsible for plot the parking area. Correct? Oh no. No. We just, just need a place to turn around. Right. But you gotta turn around you gotta after park, you after gotta the, the, the plow where you're the responsible you're for plowing. Potentially. I mean when we had discussed things with them before they are open to maintaining the plot doing some of the plowing themselves. I mean it'd be no different than um, if you had a business on the side of the road and the town came through and plowed a little bit and you needed to plow more of the parking area for your... Okay. That's all. Okay. okay, so is that done, Brian? Yes. Okay, discuss proposed short-term rental general bylaw and impact fee. I, I don't know that we have to go into detail on this tonight, but this was um, a request of the... Well, it came from the Board of Health that the town considered this in conjunction with, with zoning as being adopted uh, for short-term rentals. Should we read it over and then put it on the next agenda? Do you have it in a minute? Um, yeah, I have it on the... Um, you sent this to us electronically. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't have a chance to read it, so... Yeah. Uh, it, it's something that we could definitely discuss at a... At a yeah. The later meeting, we don't have to hold put anything. Okay. Right. At this point, we can save that yeah. for later. Yeah, they're, they're, they're good by yeah. us, I think. Yeah. All right, town administrator up straight. Yeah. Uh, updates. <clears throat> Got a whole list for you. Um. Is he still here? No. Um, we found a little bit more information about the complete streets, the qualified versus non qualified engineer situation. Oh. Um, and it turns out that if we are not using Chapter 90 funds or any state funding, then the our engineer does not need to be pre-qualified by Mass DOT. It's complete streets considered state funding? Yes. Damn. Uh, but that wasn't going to pay for design anyway. We're even, oh. The plan was to use Chapter 90 oh. funding, which is state funds. So if we used a different pot if of money? If we used a different pot of money. It, it would enable us to save money, yeah. um, but we don't have a pot of money currently appropriated. So one of the things we'll have to discuss is whether it's worth appropriating, maybe it's the $5,000 or whatever to save. Yeah. Um, I don't think he ha has an estimate back from time bomb, but it would be, but it'd probably run close to $20,000. Oh. The engineering. Um, Sounds like it's worth So there was a way, there is a way around that problem and there's the possibility that we could save money but it wouldn't be 
it would be at the expense of you know town funds instead of chapter 90 funds so we're looking at nine thousand versus twenty or is it six thousand? It was, was like it was five. It was yeah, five, five, five or six. Five or six yeah. versus yeah. versus twenty. You don't quote me on that because we don't have. But it's still less. Estimate, but it, it's it would be less. Yeah. Yeah. And substantially less. Not less by a dollar. Right. Yeah. Worth worth the pain and aggravation of. Yeah. Yeah. So if we wanted to go that route, we don't have to decide now. But the the next opportunity we would have to appropriate funds would be town meeting. And those would yeah. be available immediately if we were to take them from existing sources of. Yeah. It could be okay. Oh, it could be, it could be like free cash. cash. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think that that sounds reasonable, but we would discuss it further. Ed. Yeah. I, I'm fine well, deciding now because it doesn't. I don't know why we wouldn't no. do it that. Well, because it's not posted in an agenda. Right. Or is that? Yeah. That's that's. Okay. Fine. That, that's true. So let's put it on the agenda for two weeks hence. Yeah. Um. So we're halfway through the process. We need to go through for doing the insurance changes um, that's required to meeting with the insurance advisory committee and the public employee committee um, and I calculated out the so we need to, if you recall we need to share 25 percent of the savings of the plan changes and 25 percent of of the savings would be um, three thousand six hundred seventy eight dollars and eighteen cents that would be shared among approximately 36 people, roughly, and the total number of subscribers. And probably in proportion to what they right. pay in, or um, something like that? The public employee committee it will they'll sort that out. Yeah, we'll sort that out. But it, it, the public employee committee will make a recommendation and would sign an agreement with the select board as to how that will go. I have the, the PEC meeting is April 4th. Okay. Um, the IAC people are the same as the PEC people. Um, and we've been through this process once already last year, and I think their feeling is to do it in proportion to um, what what level plan people have out in terms of the cost that they have to pay. Okay. Uh, you know, family, there would be some breakdown of, yeah. of how that gets paid out. But I just wanted to let you know that's moving forward and that's okay. required to do. We need to wrap that up by, um, May 1st for okay. the regulations um, so um, the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing for the Town Hall appeal if you recall that's April 4th yeah um, at 6 40 p.m. I'll follow up with Town Council because he still owes us a, uh, a full opinion or he owes the down full opinion on that but that's April 4th at 6 40 and that's here? That is here. Um, and I'll let you know if anything with that changes. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, what well, were really two things that I wanted to talk about the, in terms of decisions that need to be made as we get closer to town meeting. One of them has to do with um, the water merger project. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about is the informational meeting on the 8th. Um, I think the water merger project could benefit from um, sometime in the near future before before the warrant closes having a discussion with um, probably the select board the water commissioners and maybe the finance committee to try to finalize the details of that and see where that is um, I think that would be an important thing to have to make sure everyone's on the same page if that's going to move forward for this yeah. annual town meeting, we would want, I think, consensus on how how that project would happen, how it would be paid for, um, are two important items. <coughs> and then we need to decide um, anything about the informational meeting on, on the 8th. I know the water merger project was one of the, I think that was sort of the impetus to have that meeting because it can get a little complicated. Uh, so I don't know where that, uh, I don't know how we want to go forward with these. I, I would like to suggest that instead of the information meeting, um, that we schedule that meeting with the finance select board and water department, including the district, um, on the 8th. Well, it's very important that this happen before town meeting. 
does it have to replace the information meeting though? Would it be public? Because it would be absolutely. It have to have to be a public meeting. meeting. Yeah. But I, but I, I feel like the, uh, the I mean the information meeting is generally a good idea. Right, but the information meeting was, as Brian pointed out, largely driven by the merger, and we don't we have more an questions and answers right now. So I don't feel like. It's a good idea for us to have an informational meeting on something with so many unknowns. Well, that yeah, but clear it up by the. Okay, but so we can't clear those up before the eighth. Because the purpose of the meeting on the eighth was for the, the general public to hear right. about now. the merger, not for the town committees to meet. Right. So, so is there a way to to have this meeting earlier than the eighth yeah. and then still let the public know on the on the eighth? Okay, next week then. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to look at next week. Well, the Thursday's out because Fred has a ZBA meeting. Wednesday, I am supposed to be out of town. Tuesday, I we've got the Eversource thing. The Eversource right? things now. Monday, they can't be part of that finance committee meeting. Is there enough room on their agenda to? This needs to be a, a meeting of the select board. We need to run this meeting. I guess we could. We, you, I, okay, I, I heard from finance committee as well, but maybe. Uh, no, it is, but 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 it's a oh, question of they would they would adjourn their the meeting. The archer, right? If they, if they would be willing to adjourn and then start a meeting with us, that I mean, you'd, you'd already have the finance committee here. I guess they might be grumpy because it would be late. Uh, I, I don't have to be to the ZBA. Thursday. You don't? No. I assume they have enough. So, um, I'm only alternate, so. Well, I, mean, I was I, I was I was planning to go to that. Well, unless we wanted to go to that. I do want to go to that. Okay. Yeah. I think. Yeah, because that's about the town hall. Okay. Yeah. So, it, so the second really is. Well, unless you get Thursday at, if earlier at five is an hour and a half. We'll review the first. Monday. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. I teach till six, so early second. Be here at six thirty. But that's. I mean, I wonder if. I mean, would it be easy to get the finance committee to no, be here? Probably not. Uh, that would be a little. You have to post it by tomorrow. Because you're asking it would be Monday or Tuesday. How long do you imagine that meeting would go? Oh, we can't do it Monday then. Oh, today's Wednesday. I'm sorry. Oh, I was thinking Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow. Oh, how long do we imagine it would go? I mean, is this is this adding an hour to the finance committee meeting, so to speak? At least. It, it's. Yeah, I would say at least. I. There's a lot of different opinions out there uh -huh. as to how this should happen. And it might, we might need two weeks to be ready for that. If we were to not have the information meeting on the 8th, there would still be time in the weeks after that to possibly set up a public information meeting. Well, we talked about that before, and the 8th was. I know that was, a, week, it was the earlier of two dates that I remember. Well, the, we 15th, about. the 15th is a holiday. Well, no, that's. The yeah. vacation week. The fifth, right, it's vacation, but the 15th is also holiday. It's also holiday. Oh, and that's in Massachusetts. Patriot's Day. Day. Patriot's Day. One of the things, uh, I'll, I'll complicate things. Uh, oh, sure. Because that's fun, right? At yeah. 9 o'clock at night. Um, it's freezing in here. ISIS, uh, I'm. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll recommend that, no, I'm going to recommend that, that we not, if we're going to be dealing with this water merger stuff, and I found out that Frontier Capital Plan is going to be voted on April 4th, I'm going to suggest that we don't sign the warrant on April 10th, and we would sign it on April 17th. Um, that can't, doesn't have to be a long meeting, or right. we sign it sometime in that week, because that gives us that gives us an extra week to have these discussions if we need to, or have any follow-up issues. So you're saying Frontier is deciding on their 
capital plan on the fourth. Yeah, but that's Therefore, when they're taking their vote on the capital plan. Um, and that's the Frontier School Committee. That's the Frontier School Committee, but right. what that does is it what I was hoping for the finance committee to take final votes on the second, they can't take final votes on the second. Um, what works for the finance committee is to have a meeting probably on the 16th. Okay. Because um, they can't vote that without the school committee having voted it first. And so what do you suggest? To the town. Um, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm adding to the Yes. Yeah. So we need to meet on the 17th, is what you're saying? Yeah. At yeah. some point. Okay, fine. Because you need to, Whatever the, this larger group decides on would have to get approval by finance. Or on the 16th. You it, could you do it at the same meeting? I'm not sure they're going to want to do that. Finance committee, the finance committee, I was talking with Paul and Tate, he's okay. If they meet on the 16th as well. Oh, he is? They would meet on the 16th, yeah. But could we meet prior to that meeting? No. no you, would have, you would want to meet after. Oh, you mean we with with them to talk about water stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, that doesn't give a lot of time for right modifying right. the work. So, so, so what about the first? Can go first? I think. I don't know if I can get the finance here. That's the only. That's, right. That's a, that's why I was because they're going to be. All right. Second. So if we did a preference list, the first would be the preference, and then what's the backup if they can't do it? The fourth? No, no, the ZBA. I'm sorry. The second. So we're asking, well, we're asking everybody to come the first and the second. Yeah. I wonder if it's just worthwhile to just do it on the second. Just do it on the second. I think we should get pizza and do it on the second. So, but what, what makes you so confident you can get them on the second and not the first? They, they already schedule. have a meeting schedule. Oh, they do? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. I missed that. Okay. For after or before? After. We should make it for the latter part of their meeting because we have a poll hearing at yeah, six at five thirty. Oh, right, jeez. Um, then second. we can go join their meeting or as p members of the public, and then at the end when they close theirs, yeah, the we, we can open open ours at seven or whatever. I would and, uh, look at uh, so I have assessors at six thirty for a little while. But yeah. So, so it would. It, my guess is it'd be past seven anyway. For, okay. Because they'll they don't have their other business. They start at five. Are they going to go that long? No, I don't think so. Oh, because okay. you say they're going to have to they meet on the ninth or tenth, right? Once they get the frontier. No, they're going to meet on the sixteenth. Oh, they're not meeting until the sixteenth. Could, yeah. could no, they're, no, they're meeting the second and the sixteenth? Because the ninth isn't going to work. So how would we know their response to say the water merger? We won't know until the seventeenth. The warrant articles, right? They're going to. I think. We, we, the, the goal is to get it all settled by having everybody in the same room at the same time. Right. Get it settled on the second. Lock the door until it's settled. Yeah. But get some pizza first. So I, but are, are, are you saying, Brian, I thought you were saying they won't decide in a big group their position. They want to meet on their own. I think this is a significant enough project. Where, where is it? Yeah. Okay. Shall, yeah, shall we try then for uh, ask them to to stick around after their meeting and have a another meeting and and I'll get pizza. Yeah. So. Okay. So what's the backup? The backup. Well, that's why I was thinking the first would be the back. The the first and then the second is the backup. But if they are, yeah, the, how yeah, about the second and the first is the backup? Yeah. If they, if they if they are not happy with that idea. Then ask them about coming in two days in a row. Coming yeah, what's, what's in. What's on the third? Monday <laughs> uh, like and Tuesday. Yeah. Oh. So they might. Then they will feel. They but feel let's just plan it. Let's just plan it on Tuesday. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Tuesday. Okay. What else? Seven. We we okay. can. They're already planning on coming in, and we can ask the water commissioners to come in in the water district. going to call this the water meeting I'm right after the whole hearing so I'll send around a revised schedule of all this yes. stuff okay. Okay. Yes, yeah. um, and then what are we doing about the eighth we'll have it I guess if it if something you know, if, if Tuesday we're still in the stalemate that we decide Tuesday 
whether to cancel it or not, but I think we should at least keep it still on the calendar. Um, I, the planning board might want a moment to talk about the bylaws too, uh, if that's going to be a public information uh, meeting about things you're going to vote on. Their presentation is not very long, okay. so they, they don't need a lot of time. Anybody else? So just the two topics then would be at the eight. Yeah, are there any other well, big topics? I mean, the library has conceptual plans. Now. The uh, uh, planning board renovations, the, uh, bylaws changes. The, uh, the yeah, Front Church good. Capital is that worth saying anything about? Well, won't be decided by the then. Okay. So, uh, well, we should. The school committee will vote on for. Yeah. I mean. But that, yeah, let's not make that more complicated. Right. Yeah. But I think I think the, the, the really big things are the water merger because that's a big dollar item, and the bylaws because they're bylaws. Okay. Fine. All right. That's fun. What else? That's it. That's it. And what about unfinished business or unanticipated business? I'm sure there's none. I don't have any. Really? I anticipate everything. <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. What's this again?